I, for one, am grateful, Mrs. Bush, that they are finally bringing civilization to this savage land. I could not agree with you more, my dear. My daddy settled this land, and I know he'll be looking down on us, pleased at how we help the natives. Yes, they've lost their land, but they've gained access to heaven. But Father, do you mean unless an innocent receives communion, they're destined to go to hell? Uh, it hardly seems fair. Uh, what I mean to say, Jenny, is that there is a great deal of difference between an innocent and a savage. I never thought of it that way. Yes, they lived like animals, but they're happier now. Uh -huh. Not only do people now have motor cars, Father, but I heard that pretty soon, we will be able to fly. No, only angels can fly, Jenny. No, no, apparently people can fly. Didn't you hear? Out in Kansas, a man even got a car to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think so, Jenny. Apparently, Mr. Johns wants to run for governor which is why he's so concerned with cleaning up the state. Nate Johns. Yes. His family is nothing but hillbilly trash that came here after the war. I don't want to be judgmental, but this state should not be ruled by such a disgusting family. A family without class. Apparently. But John's family have made a lot of money, and he has a lot of friends in politics. Mrs. Bush, money isn't everything. There are many things that money cannot buy. It seems that money can buy voters, though. What you must remember, my dear, is that we have been brought here to spread the word. And the word and civilization, they are the same thing. They are the gifts. It is the opportunity we have, the chance to live among people who are decent and who do not kill each other, and who let you worship in peace. Uh, it, it's so confusing, Father. Sometimes I find it impossible to make the distinction between a loving act and a hateful one. I mean, they often seem to be the same thing. Yes, Jenny, it, it is confusing. But you only have to ask me if you need help. Indeed. Well, here we are, Mrs. Bush. <gasps> Armadillo. Sometimes. I'm Jake. Your friends from Blackwater hired me to guide you. They ain't my friends, but pleased to meet you, Jake. I got the horses saddled up and ready out front. and hit the trail. Take it easy until we're out of town. Ain't no point in causing a ruckus. Mind me saying. 
Who said I was a decent fella? It's been abandoned for years now. Folks say it was built during the Mexican War. What kinds of soldiers around back then? Why'd they leave? Well, I ain't entirely sure. I, I heard they had to go up north to fight Indians, or maybe they got tired of being soldiers and went looking for gold. You know how things is. So what are you doing up at the fort? I'm looking for an old friend. Well, like I said, you ain't gonna find many folk around those parts these days. Those you do find are about as sociable as most three to back to. <laughs> I mean, I ain't one to judge a man by the company he keeps, but... Well, he ain't been friends for a long time. Let's go! Are you planning on spending any time in Armadillo, Mr. Marston? I doubt it. I ain't planning on staying very long. Well, if you're fixing for some female company, you can do a lot worse than Armadillo. Fine as cream gravy they are. Not like beef plants. Hey, no girl ain't even fit for a drink. Wait, Mr. Marvin! You ain't gonna find a fork without me! It was the marshal who hired me, Lee Johnson. Do you know him? I think I heard his name. Says he got a telegram from some Blackwater big bugs asking for a guy. I guess it's none of my business. That's right. You ain't very talkative, are you? Nope. I'm just chewing the dog, mister. It's how I am. I don't mean nothing by it. Trust me, there's things you're better off not knowing. Damn coyotes, what a waste of good meat. Come on, Mr. Martin, that ain't how we do think around here. Yeah. Not far now. You'll see the fort when you get to the top of this hill. Let's go. Listen, mister. This here is what's left of Fort Mercer. Some gang rode in and took the place over. So I understand. This is where we part ways, friend. You have yourself a good time. for you. Bill Williamson! Come out here right now! Go away now, John. Don't make me kill you. Nobody needs to kill anyone, Bill. You must think I was born yesterday. You always did think I was an idiot. That ain't fair, Bill. You were as my brother. I've come to try to save you. <laughs> oh. Do I look like I need saving? Bill, please. They want to kill us all. I can help you. Well, you never tried to save me before. You only seemed to save yourself. Bill. I implore you, think about this. <laughs> you implore me? <laughs> you implore me? You always were one for fancy words. <laughs> oh. 
Well, things are different now, John. Now I'm in charge! No more Dutch! And no more you! <laughs> implores. I, I implores you to go back and tell them to send someone just a little bit more impressive next time. Well... Uh. Oh. <laughs> Poor John. Well, you're alive. So it would seem. So, how do you feel? I don't know the polite word for it. I do. Stupid is the word we use around here. What were you doing? I was... Oh! I was doing something stupid. Well, you'll be okay. Once you didn't die, the doctor said you'd be fine. He got the bullets out a couple days ago. Good. It cost us $15. I'm sorry, madam. Should have left me there to die. Did you want to die? I mean, was that it? Was that why you went straight out to Fort Mercer and picked a fight with the worst bandit in the county? To die, Mr. Er, Mr. Marston. John Marston. Bonnie McFarlane. Miss Bonnie McFarlane. Well, you may be right, Miss McFarlane. I don't know. Huh. So what were you doing? Trying to give Mr. Williamson a chance, for old time's sake. You know Bill Williamson? Knew him, long time ago. Well, what was he like? Dumb. Just like you. Thank you, miss. <laughs> you see my hat? I have. And uh, what will you do now? Now I'm gonna. Take my time and go after him the less kind way. Well, that sounds very fun, Mr. Marston. Quite heroic, just like in those penny dreadfuls my brother used to read. Meanwhile, if you'll excuse me, I've got a ranch to run. Of course, if you're feeling better, why not take a ride with me later? Help me patrol the perimeter. You can earn back some of that... about time I started paying back that $15. I sure can use an extra pair of hands around here. Let's see if we can get you back in the saddle. There's the foreman's office. It's also where we lock up good-for-nothing outlaws, such as yourself. I'm happy enough with my current quarters right now, Miss McFarland. Okay, let's see if you can still ride a horse. Are you sure? Seems awfully convenient. Don't start something you ain't Are you getting on the horse or not? of the ranch so you can get your bearings.
Inside is the general store. You won't find Parisian high fashion, but it's good for the essentials. Very convenient. I don't think I've ever seen a ranch with its own store before. And here's the corral. This one's for the horses. What do you think? I'm no expert, but it certainly looks like a fine corral. I suspect you've stolen more horses than you've broken. Now, where'd you get such an idea? First impressions are hard to erase. train station. Things sure have changed since the line finally got finished, bringing in all sorts of new folk like yourself. Is that such a bad thing? Change is only good when it makes things better. No complaints from me, Miss McFarland. Come on. What are you waiting for? Come on, I don't fight. <sighs> How about a cold drink, Mr. Marston? Thank you, ma'am. Getting shot, then riding a horse seems to take it out of you. <laughs> I could use a rest. Sure. Come on in. I'll show you the house, and then you can sit for a while. Thank you. Mr. Marston. Miss McFarland. Remember me telling you about the trouble we've been having with rustlers and other undesirables? I do. Will you help me keep watch on the property line this evening? Sure. I want to see just who is trespassing on our land. This is a fine weapon. Come, let's head out. The country is really beautiful at around this time. Ready, Mr. Marston? Let's mount up and patrol the ranch. for anything suspicious. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I feel a lot happier someone's along with me. I feel a lot happier now I got a rifle. Well, with your trigger itch and my feminine intuition, we should make quite a team. living off the land like this. Maybe you should move to a big city, become a lady of leisure.
Something I've had a little experience in. Maybe Bill Williamson did get lucky after all. Luck didn't really come into it, miss. You're a useful man to have around the ranch, that's for sure. But don't think I've forgotten what brought you here. We'll do whatever we can to help you. I sure appreciate that, Miss McFarland. Here we are. Go! Mr. Marston. Makes me kind of happy I saved your life. Get some sleep and I will see you in the morning. Good night, Miss McFarlane. Charlie. He's a good one to sniff out trouble. Stick next to the dog, mister. Can I borrow this, friend? Let's 
Let's go. Oh, Mr. Marston, how are you doing today? I'm well, Miss McFarland. Thank you. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Thank you. So, uh, how are your ribs? Fine. A little sore, but apart from a couple extra scars, it'll be as nothing happened. Good. Uh, come in, come in. You know, you never did tell me how you met that Bill Williamson or what you wanted from him. No, miss, I did not. Well, why not, if you don't mind me asking? I certainly don't mind you asking if you don't mind me not telling. See, it's a complicated and somewhat pathetic tale, and by telling you, not only would I be putting your life in danger, but also threatening the lives of some people that I hold very dear. Well, I apologize if I seem to be prying. And I apologize for my reticence. Hope you believe me when I say that it's simply out of respect for you. Of course, Mr. Marston. I understand that a city dweller such as yourself likes to have some exotic secrets so us country folk are impressed. <laughs> I'm no city man, miss. Yeah, but I saw you get on the train at Blackwater. You with those gentlemen in bowler hats? I'm still no city man. But I'll bet you can't ride, Mr. Marston. I hate to take money from a lady, miss. <laughs> oh, you won't be. I'll race you right now. If it makes you happy. We'll see. I'll show you how we ride around these parts. Come on! On the count of three. Three, two, one, go! I trust you're not gonna be a gentleman about this. You don't know me at all, Miss McFarland. Follow me! Come on! Should I wait for you to catch up? Are you saving the best for last? Call yourself a rancher? Come on. Why don't I lead the way? I bet you're starting to regret your brave words, Miss McFarland. How you doing back there? Come. Would you like me to slow down? Whoa there. Pick up the pay! Jingle those spurs, Miss McFarland! Come on!
It was fun. Sure. You know, you should go pay the marshal a visit in Armadillo sometime. I'm sure he could help you deal with that nice Mr. Williamson. Yeah, I might just do that, Miss McFarland. You do whatever you think best, Mr. Marston. How are you? Good, Miss McFarland. How are you? I'm well. Would you mind riding with me to Armadillo? I've got to get some supplies and I could do with the company. Of course. You can take the reins. It wouldn't do for a terrifying bounty hunter such as yourself to be seen driven around by a woman. <laughs> something I think about. A peculiar outlook. I can't really say I understand you. I can't always say I do either. Oh, don't be so deliberately enigmatic. I'm not, miss. Yes, you are. You are being deliberately obscure as a substitute for having a personality. I just know there are two theories to arguing with women, and neither one works. I'm not even going to dignify that gibberish with a response. It is not. 
but it does okay for us. Most important thing for you right now is getting yourself into Dr. Johnson's office to purchase some medicine. The first one's on me. Thank you, miss. I'll pay you back. I'm sure you shall. The doc's a good fellow. He saved your life, so be polite to him. Meet me in front of the general store when you're done. Not feeling ill, I hope. Need some laudanum? Hey, mister. I'm selling some good tonics if you need them. Any trouble, let me know. Much obliged. I don't believe in any of this buried treasure of Rio del Lobo nonsense. for driving me. It was nice to be able to enjoy the view for once, and a little company never hurts now and again. You're more than welcome, miss. Least I can do. Thank you for the medicine. Why don't you have a look around Armadillo? You can always take a stagecoach back to the ranch later. I might just do that. Travel safely, miss. Try not to get... Stay away from old Ma Fowler's laxative powders from now. Howdy. Howdy. Yes, I could go sweet. Armadillo's still a great town. Spot that damn gang. As I don't die, I'll quit this job in five summers' time. How long? If my daddy had hurried up and died earlier, I might have been able to find a better. like a man who could use a ride. Excuse me. Hey, hey, you got a visitor. <coughs> Shut up, you. Now, what you want? My name's John Marston. 
You wanted to speak to me. I did? Apparently so. Why? I guess because we're both in the business of the law. You that fella from the train company? No, I'm from Fort Mercer. Fort Mercer? You them, one of them Williamson boys. Calm down. Go on, shoot him, mister. Shoot him. <laughs> Come on, what? You, you getting cute with me, boy? What's going on here? <clears throat> I got me one of them Williamson boys. I got me one of them idiots who give marshals a bad name. Oh, no. Put your gun down. You must be the man from Blackwater. Yes, sir. Listen, that dog ain't too bright. But he seems loyal. Jonah, get out of here for a minute. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnson, sir. And you. Oh, I done seen enough of your hide around here, friend. <laughs> I think there's some school children down the way you can go and frighten. Oh, hardy fucking har. Dickhead. What are you doing here, Mr. Marston? Apart from frightening my deputies. I'm here to capture or kill Bill Williamson. <laughs> okay. Can you help me? He's outside my jurisdiction. He's in the next county. Of course, Bill Williamson and his boys have tended to keep themselves away from my town. So you're happy to have him out there? Well, I ain't happy, but I also ain't suicidal. My job is to keep this town safe, not clean up all of these three counties. It's hard enough around here. You know, I hear you speak, and suddenly I'm reminded of how some of the people I respected most in my life had a problem with authority. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm sure you and your fine friends have enjoyed spending your time running around pursuing noble causes. My cause is to keep this town from turning into a living hell for the folks who live here. The whole world has problems, mister, and I'm here doing what I can. Why? What's happening? Right now? I got the railway, the people who pay my salary, trying to get me to turn a blind eye to them burning down settlements up there. I got a bunch of cattle rustlers out near Box Canyon needs shutting down. Not forgetting the gang that keeps murdering homesteaders out in the back country. And I got a bunch of hoods over in the saloon, drunk, threatening to shoot up the whole town. That's all I got today. But it's early yet. Give me a couple more days. There'll be more. All right. Tell you what. <sighs> Let's go deal with them hoods in the saloon. Then we'll discuss Williamson. Okay, boy. You're a persistent little cuss, ain't you? Only when things matter. The saloon's this way. So who are we looking for? A bunch of two-bit hoodlums, led by this fella called Walton. Goddamn road agents who prey on the stages coming in and out of town. Drivers and armadillos spend more time with their hands in the air than on the range these days. What's the rush? They ain't going nowhere. There's the dumb rat bastard now. Let's follow him. See what kind of hole he crawls into. Walton's the top screw. Let's get after him. He spotted you. Stay on him, boy. Catch me up. I don't want to let that bastard get away. Come on. Walton's as bad as you say he is. Why don't we just beef him now while we got the chance? Because that ain't how the law works. 
Is that right, Marshal? And alive, he can still talk. Doesn't sound like he's a man to be reasoned with. He ain't. But a few days of my hospitality, and he'll be telling me what I need to know. Walt's gang's been growing fast. How long is easy money for easy work? Chola Springs, Gap Tooth Ridge, these boys get around. Walton's a start, but there's plenty more where he came from. Slow down! He's headed for Pleasant's house. Let's stop so we can get a better look. Slow up. Looks like we got company, boys. <laughs> Damn. Take cover. We'll work our way up this hill. <laughs> Take cover behind that wagon to your right. Behind the creek, Marston! Not a bad shot, Mr. Marston. Why don't you check in with me next time you're in town? I don't want to be no policeman, Marshal. <laughs> Nor did I, my friend. I can promise you that. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Mr. Marston.
Can I have this? Marston, 
I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson. To settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that? I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. <sighs> call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland. I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true. Especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, Let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her... Well, I, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man, in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. Good to see you, Miss McFarland. Oh, 
be your true calling, Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Mr. Marston, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. And we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, and terrible winters, cholera. I buried more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. That whole herd of cattle just take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace, and men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. 
Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. Hello. How are you today? sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches. Dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about it. Mr. Marston, how are you? Let's see if we can put that new lasso of yours to good use. That ranch has said there's a pack of wild horses nearby. Let's go. You sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. I thought you said he could ride, Bonnie. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy the but ride? But I know we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there's few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. There's the horses! Get that lasso ready! Rope one! We'll bring him down together! Don't be afraid of that lasso! Let me take it from here. 
back on your own horse. I think that's enough activity for an old timer like me. Come on, I'll boy. I'll take this one back to the ranch. See you later. Come on. I'm glad. He's quite a character. You have a good life here. The life I want. For me and my family, I mean. We don't have a lot anymore. You have enough. It's one that gets so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor. But it's straight. And it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired, then. Some deck must be shy of Joker, Miss McFarland. Bonnie, Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. No rest for the wicked. Let's see if we can track down that other herd of horses. You never did tell me why you were never married, aside from the snobbery, that is. Yeah. In many ways, my wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland. Is that so? She's always been a woman. <laughs> Damn. Go.
Let's go. Let's drive them up the canyon where it narrows. We'll trap them there. Stop it! Let's go! Let's go! Let's move here, my four-legged friend! Easy! Come on! they are.
Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal. Let's go!
Hey, miss, I got most of the horses secure and the chicken. Well, thank you, Amos, but it's the herd I'm worried about. I know, they're scattered all over the valley and beyond. The weather is coming in real fast. So what do you suggest, Amos? We leave the herd out there to be scattered by the storm and ourselves left here to die without a livelihood? Can I help? No, miss. If the men get caught out in that storm, they're gonna die. And if we lose our herd, we'll all die, you stupid man. Doesn't sound like we're left with much of a choice then. Come on, Amos. Round up your men. Let's get the herd. Dang. Come on, boys. Come on, Mr. Marston. Hurry. Come. Careful. We can't afford to fall. Are you a religious man? Not in any real sense. Sometimes I tell myself things Watch happen for a mud. reason. Like what brought me here was fate come a-calling. But nobody made my path for me. We all need to look for answers somewhere. Some in big old books, others in big old bottles of whiskey. Believing in some kind of divine purpose ain't gonna give me my wife and kid back. The pastor's who we are, Miss McFarland. There ain't no changing that. Faith is a luxury I can't afford. We have two herds out grazing in different pastures. We'll need to merge them and bring them all back. I think we can handle that. The cows get real ornery in bad weather. It's more work, but I'll show you how to deal with them. I'm gonna save my voice for the herd. It's gonna be hard shouting over this storm.
Come on, let's go, let's go! Slow down! Keep it moving! Move, come on! Don't stop, let's go! Move, let's go!
Here comes. Dave back. Seven three one. What is it with these things? Hello. It's a new line. Hello. Hello. Sounds fun. What's happening? I have no idea. Yeah, if it's important, they'll send someone down like they did with you. Suddenly, the world is full of days. <laughs> I remember when we first got here. We used to consider people from Dade County to be exotic. Now guys can get here from the Midwest, and they can do it in six days. Things have changed. <laughs> They've gotten away from me. Hello? I don't understand it no more, boy. Honest goodness. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> Marshal! Marshal! <coughs> Marshal! I've just been up in the canyon, spying like you said. I think I've seen me a couple of them rustlers. I think it was the Baller Twins and a couple of Mexicans. They up there right now? Well, it was a group of four men rounding up Mr. Gulch's livestock, and none of them looked like any of Gulch's hands, so yes, sir, right now. That sarcasm is most unbecoming, Eli. It's going to hold you back in life, even worse than your lazy eye. 
All right, let's go. You ride with us again, Marson? Will you help me? I will try. It'd be my pleasure. Marston, I ain't for all this government interference. Believe me, Marshal, neither am I. I try to keep the federal boys happy. I mean, we need all the help we can get. But what does a flannel mouth city boy who's never forked a bale of hay in his life know about a state like New Austin? Nothing, I reckon. All this manifest destiny hogwash, taming a wild land, bringing modernization and betterment to the West. It's only made the rich richer and the poor poorer, and it's killed a way of life. Building a factory over a field ain't gonna help nobody I know. Look at what they've done to the natives for God knows how many years now. It's hardly like they're gonna suddenly start respecting a man's right to work his land. That's different. They're savages. It ain't that different, Jonah. Are you sure we're at the Bollard Twins, Eli? any place. We're nearly there. Keep your eyes out for the bollards. Everybody dismount. Whoa. Follow me. Let's go. Stay alert, boys. Be ready, boys. We're probably going to be outnumbered. And those bastards ain't stored on firepower, neither. Coming from you, friend, that's a real compliment. Even this 
Forgive me, friend. Full foot! Let's cross while we still can! Baller twins got themselves an army. Yeah, rustling's a profitable business, and they ain't short on willing recruits these days. Why a man break his back for 12 hours a day? For a rancher, he can't afford to pay. But the rancher can't. Yeah, it's one of them vicious circle things the marshal keeps jawing about. Beat those sons of bitches! We got to get to that ridge! Where's your brand and iron now? Come on! Keep up! Up the hill! Let's blaze our way to that ridge! Are you kidding me? Seen he can take care of himself. Sure does. There still ain't a better shot in all of Chalice Springs. At least that's what he keeps telling us. 
I'm gonna beat the lot of you. Four rusters, take them down. Sweet mother of God! To the victor, the spoils. This way. we are, the less chance they have of making a run for it. Like the ballers won't be rustling again anytime soon. Quick, let's get those hostages free. <sighs> Thanks, Marshal. We're indebted to you with our lives. Just get them cattle back safe. All right. Ah, oh, thank you. 
Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Marston. Yes, well done. Now, about Williamson. I'll do what I can. You know, as you can see, this country is infested with all manner of scum. You can say that again. Well, one other thing, Marston. Mr. Johnson, sir. It's Mr. Wes Dickens. He's missing. Who? Mr. Wes Dickens, the tonics merchant. He was doing town last week. Oh, the narcotic and bat piss salesman who cons housewives out of their money with promises of eternal youth. Yes, him, but I think you're being a little unfair. He's helped a great many of the county, and many of the townsfolk are really missing him. You hear that, Marston? We just butchered a gang of thieves, and the town is up in arms about a missing snake oil merchant. I am so glad to be serving such a wise and respectable people. Come on, Eli.
Last still. <laughs> Borrow this friend. There's much treasure here. You want map? I retire. Here, take map. You earn it. Thanks, mister. I could use a little luck. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You need help? Mister, you alive? Ah, fuck, fuck. God damn it. Good heavens. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. Uh, St. Peter, open up them pearly gates. I'm coming home. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. Oh. 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 Hurry, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. I'm finished. Done for. Just sit up straight, will you? Head for Armadillo, friend. What is your name, friend? John Morse. Good God! Out of the frying pan into the fire! Excuse me! How many outlaws can a man encounter in one day? You must have me mistaken with somebody else, Grant. They're back! I'm done for! <laughs> Shoot, you pal. Make 
sure you stay on the road. I don't know how much I can take right now. Leave the driving to me. I'll go as easy as I can. Is that armadillo? Come on, hurry! Thanks, man. You're gonna be fine. Take We're nearly me there. Into your arms. <laughs> you need more than a doctor, my friend. We made it safe, you'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but I appreciate the civility. I owe you, sir. And I always pay my debts. Uh, Jesus, but if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for, for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man for. They're planning on building a rail junction up way. That cougar took up three lawmen the other week. Really? It's excellent to see you today. How are you, friend? If you have any night fevers, come back and see me. I won't sell armaments to them thugs, whatever the profits may be. Any meds, laudanum, adrenaline, or pills, come see me. A salesman, huh? The marshal best step up post haste. Men starting to question his <laughs> Why do I feel like I just got robbed? Take care of yourself, and the
Who did? He's missing. He's only a youngster. My boy is missing. Where? Who took him? Them people in the hills. Them hills near Hanging Rock. They took him. <laughs> can't the police force help you? Oh, they can't even help themselves. Please, sir. My son is missing. I need your help. If I find him, I'll bring him back to you. Dragged you in, sir. I'm begging you, please find him. Hello.
Ah, since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? We've had this problem for months with this group of bandits who are getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. Women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway. We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. Hey, wait up! who claims to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East, the result of years of research. If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. I'm just changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. The people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that West Dickens. I can't understand a goddamn word he's saying. Look at them vultures circling up ahead. We should check it out. Marston, Eli, go see what it is. Survivors here, Marshal. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. Come on. We'll head for Ridgewood Farm. See if 
they know anything. What kind of man does that? A bunch of weak men. A pack of cowards is the most dangerous kind. Some men are just more plain meat. I think it's this land that makes the men, as much as the other way around. Men are born, and then they're born. At least that's how I see it. Who could have done such a thing? Any number of people. Especially now the word's out we're cleaning up the county. Between Walton's boys and the rustlers, we've been spilling a lot of blood. I can see more boats than just a hand. We best take a look, boys. Fire's still smoking. Those scumbags must still be around. Come on! Their trail leads to Ridgewood Farm. Come on, let's hurry! Sons of bitches! Didn't you want to run a gang of outlaws, Marston? Yeah, but not like that. It wasn't our way. At least it wasn't my way. Killing and thieving's never right, boy. No matter how you dress it up. Anywhere. This ain't right. Split up and search the area. John, you check the buildings in the barn. Nobody's in the shed. Boarded up. Break that door now. The rest of you, get your guns ready.
You and me gonna have ourselves some fun. Make a break for the shed when the coast is clear. There'll be a deputy waiting for you. Thank you. I was convinced I was dead. Head for the shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. Thank you. They said they were gonna kill us all. Look like that's all of them. Let's see how the hostages are doing. My God. Chasing him down like wild dogs. I thought you were supposed to protect us, Marshal. You folk eat men. You ain't nothing. You're just some man on a government payroll taking money that the rest of us have to pay for with our lives. Yeah. What is wrong with this country? Not up, men. The man that kills the boss of that bunch gets fifty dollars. It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives, people's homes. <laughs> Come on, they're gonna get away! Follow me, we can still catch them! Let's go! Do you think they might be headed for the first or Marshal? What? Williamson's men! What's your face to Williamson anyway, Marshal? Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell are you talking about? Some people I have the displeasure of knowing want him dead. We used to run in a gang together. He was once like family. If this is how you treat your family, I'd hate to see what you do to your enemies. That was a lifetime ago. And bear in mind, he's left me for dead the last two times I've seen him. I'm about figuring we've moved past the family part. That somebody on the cliff? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now. Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody! 
ready. Take cover. In that shed. This way. Keep together and stay in here. This is the best cover we got. Something that you're still breathing. Come here, boy. Come on, Bessie. Give. Oh. Norman Deke. Fuck. Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is gonna help us get to Bill. Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Deke. Mighty kind. Fuck you. Hog time. Let's get him to jail. Can I borrow this, friend? This will fetch a good price. Let's 
Let's make this quick. Come on. Let's get this over with. And I can tell you, with no uncertainty, that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you <laughs> good day, sir. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be? I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir, I'd do a bulk discount rate of $1.95 an ounce, <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more. That's a lot of immortality. Oh, uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> uh, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along, let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. Okay. <laughs> to Ridgewood Farm, the sick and needy await us. Oh, the life of a wandering saver of souls. I heard about you, Mr. West Dickens. And I about you, Mr. Austin. Good week in the week. Gullible out of their hard-earned money. My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill-informed scuttle. You're as full of wind as a horse with a collar. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands of happy customers attest to that. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine metal in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing old fellow there has never been. And so shall you, the fair Iago or Cassio. I don't like the sound of it. Showmanship, John. The flourish. The bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret this. I'll drop this. you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the crowd that is sure to be forming. Eventually, I will call you up to try my tonic. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the paying public. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. Best you alight here, dear boy, so no one sees us arriving together. I'll see you there. Be ready to enchant the crowd.
credit. Friends, hardworking souls of uh, Chola Springs, uh, gather round, gather round. Do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, backaches, swelling, sprains, sore chests, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> but can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who could prove the qualities of it by... Take a drink right now. You, sir, come up here. Step right up. That's the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today, science will be vindicated. Your eyesight is greatly improved, is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. The eyesight of an eagle, granted by imbibing Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eye's so damn sharp, why don't you try shooting my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Right, friend. Here comes the throw. Go home! Such an eye. Behold the power of the elixir plucked out of the sky. Hey! Hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? They well, don't work like that around here, mister. Come on! Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteer. Look at him! The tonic is coursing through his veins! Normally, I don't fight him. Look at that! Human strength! You messed with the wrong fella! There it is! Skeptics and dissenters! Irrefutable proof! Do not let this opportunity pass you by! Look, he's over there. Go get him! Now. Watch out! He's got a gun! Look out, mister. Who the hell do you Look think out. you are? You ain't leaving here alive! Oh, hey, a marvelous shot, dear boy! The kind of deadly accuracy that can only be afforded by the West Dickens elixir! Come! I have plenty for all! Damn! 
he's fine. Get out of my way. Hey, where are you going? No harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Well, I think that went kind of well, don't you? I'm just glad that my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament. And I, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks burying gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. Uh, he's uh, most often found at Coote's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! Uh. Everything all right, madam? It's Miss. Oh. Oh, let me look at you. My gentleman caller. You remind me of my Peter. Have you seen him? I don't think so. 
Where is that man? We'll be late for the ceremony. He must still be at the saloon in Armadillo, talking to the musicians. He's such a fine man. Must be making things right for me, as usual. Well, I gotta get going, ma'am. I'm sure your Peter will be just fine. Wait, I beg you. Would you possibly go fetch him for me? This was meant to be my perfect day. Please, sir. Something must have happened. I can't bear it. So you want me to go find your Peter so you can have a perfect day? Yes, please, sir. I'll see what I can do. Oh. Excuse me, are you Seth? Who are you? I'm a friend of Mr. Wes Dickens. My name's Marston. John Marston. Goodbye, John Marston. It's been a great pleasure. I need your help, Seth. We need your help, me and Mr. Wes Dickens. Let me be frank for one second, partner. I hate people. It was people who got me in this mess in the first place. What mess? Look at me! Look! Scrambling around, looking for maps, half insane. I ain't washed in six months. My hair falling out, my mind's going. What happened? <laughs> what happened? My partner. He stole half my map. I never would have done that to him. Never! Look at me. Who did this to you? My partner. My boy, my man. Moses Ford. I don't have the facility to tell you what I would have done for that man and what I would do to him now. Why? Because he stole half my goddamn map. And what map's that then? The map, partner. The map that tells me where it is. Where what is, friend? I ain't telling you that. I ain't. <laughs> don't make me tell, partner. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. All mine. Sure. And where's this Moses now? He's at Benedict Point. The law got him for exhuming. Some people, they feel differently. Not Moses. Him and me are the same. The self-same. Well. Come on, Seth. Let's go see Moses, get you your map back. Then maybe you'll help me. All right, partner. Let's go. Horses are over here!
take that long, digging up graves and looting from the dead. Ha, hypocrites! The whole damn lot of you! Are you saying it's better to steal from the living? They're corpses. They don't care, none. These people have been laid to rest. You don't know nothing. I talk to them long after they've been forgotten by every other fellow. I tell them it's all right to be scared and alone. I embrace them when they're stinking and rough. I met some sick bastards in my time, Seth. But you? You're special. Folk is cold and heartless all their lives. To me, they get warmer when they're actually cold and heartless. Surely that makes sense to even you. Not exactly, it don't. Are we really living anyway? Do you exist outside my mind? Maybe we're both having the same dream, and when we wake up, we'll die. I certainly seem to be in some kind of nightmare. What'd you say? I, I didn't say nothing. I just heard you say something. You're a crazy man. You should get that hand looked at. Seth, I need someone who can get a wagon inside Fort Mercer. I was told you could help me, but I'm not sure you even know what day it is. I don't. I can't even tell you what year it is. I knew this was a waste of time. So, you want to go after Bill Williams, do you? You know Bill? Oh, yes. I met Williamson and Deke. All them boys. Sometimes they call me on when they get some special job needs doing. I got a reputation as a man who do things most other fellers won't. Now, that I can believe. I reckon you can get in there no bother. Assuming you help me find this map, that is. Come on! All right, this is it. Let's stop here a moment and come up with a plan. As far as I know, Moses is being held in that shack. There's a couple of deputies keeping guard outside. Can you distract him so I can sneak in for a quick parlay with that son of a bitch? I'm sure I can think of something. away from the shack and out of sight. Somewhere out past that hill. This is one god-awful assignment. I know. This place is deader than a side of bacon. Don't you lay a finger on them horses, mister.
job getting rid of them clowns. Now keep an eye out in case they come back. Moses? Oh, Moses? You got a visitor. Oh, my God, Seth. They arrested me. It weren't my fault. Ah! Get the hell away from me! Get that slippery bastard! I need him alive, though! Get away from me! Name your price. Huh. You just wait till I get loose, mister. <sighs> you son of a bitch, let me go. Huh. Who do you think you are, mister? You son of a bitch! Where's my damn map? Damn you, Seth! Damn you, Seth! You've always been a twisty little freak! I ain't telling you shit! Ah! Then I'm gonna cut you ah, up ah. piece by piece! <laughs> Till you find your tongue. Friend, this man's ah. gone crazy in the sun. Ah. I suggest you take my advice and start talking. Shut up, Marston! I want to cut into a bona fide man's uh, flesh. Ain't uh, never cut into a live uh, one before. <laughs> uh, odd, odd fellow's rest. It, it, it's an odd fellow's rest. Now, get away from me once and for all. Well, ain't that a damn shame. I was starting to enjoy myself. I think you gone pissed yourself, Moses. Those deputies went and put a bounty on your head. Best we clear it now. Don't need the law on our backs. I don't have no money, but I got me a pardon letter. Here, take it. You earned it for helping me with the Moses. Uh. Come on, we can pay it off in the telegraph office. Uh. Uh. Come on, ain't no time to be wasting. What's he paying you? I'll give you double. Seth would sell his own mother. Now go! Before I change my mind! We'll split it between us, just me and you. Speak to that fella. Everybody Let's get this over with. Damn treasure hunters, man. This letter should do it. You better go straight Come on. Now. Just give Back him that pardon letter so we can get out of here. See you soon. The sheriff. So, mister, thanks for your help. Don't worry yourself with thanks, Seth. Just help me when I come ask it. No problem, mister.
I'm on board. Hello. Howdy. Well, I'd love to carry on all day. Seth. Hey, John. Hey, partner. Get what you need? Ready to help me? Not quite. Not quite ready. You see, I wasted a bunch of time looking for that last bit of map. And I got to thinking, Moses was a liar. And I imagined myself doing all kinds of unpleasant things to his corpse. <laughs> and then I realized... You realized you were sick in the head? That you needed to move on with your own limited time on Earth? No, partner. I realized Moses were no liar. The issue was Aiden O'Leary, who said he had the body. Aiden died in that flu epidemic, and the bodies weren't even buried yet. <laughs> you got the body sitting in the back of that wagon behind you? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're not even going to wait until they're buried before you... <laughs> well, they don't care, do you, boys? Honest folk, off to a better place. Apart from that Aiden O'Leary fella, I never liked him. They say he lay with his sister. I don't like women, partner. I don't. Not since Mammy died. Seth, what are you going to do with those bodies? <sighs> I'm going to take him back to a nice, quiet spot and look for the map. I needs the map, partner. I needs it. Come on! Loitering with the pile of dead bodies ain't exactly the best idea. All right. I know a secluded spot where we can search these sleeping beauties. These bodies. Where are you? Come on, don't be shy. What did you say? I didn't say nothing. Are you talking to them? So what if I am? I feel less alone with them than in a crowd of people. The way I see it, they lost their souls, just like me. You're truly a sick man, Seth. You remind me of why I hate people. For a man who kills so much, you sure seem to have a problem with the dead. Life kills everyone in the end. <laughs> They ain't so different from you and me. Aside from them being dead and rotting, I guess they ain't. All right, Seth, calm down. You talk to the corpses and I'll drive the wagon. They're coming after us! Get us out of here! We don't see them first. Give them up, you sleeping bastards! I'm gonna look for the map back here. You try to shake those damn rednecks! Where do you think you're going? See? You're one big hat. There's some bullets on this. Better than a poke in the eye. All done with this one. Hey, this fella's a little right. Bet he's got something on. Where's my map? Come on. No need for money where you're going, friend. Thanks, 
partner. Be seen, you very Go left up here. Mister, I reckon I'll sit here a while trying to figure this out. I'm gonna be rich. When you're done with that, get over to Fort Mercer. I need you inside that place. After I find my treasure, mister. It's like that, is it? Huh? Not talking to Seth today? Oh, <laughs> the old silent treatment. Oh, whoa. Hoo -hoo. Ah, that's quite a stench. Hey, Seth. Oh. Oh. Seth, come back here. Oh, hey, partner. I was just looking for you. Looking for me? What? Over there? How you doing? I'm good. Well, uh, see you later, partner. Where you going, partner? Nowhere. <laughs> okay. Nowhere wouldn't happen to be where that thing you're looking for is kept, would it? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Come on, partner. Okay, I was just uh, fooling. Partner, uh, you know, the thought of that treasure does funny things to me. According to the map, it's somewhere in that big abandoned house.
I think you'll be needing this. Try around the back. Get some friends! Even this up a bit! That's my damn treasure! Do something! 
something, mister! They're gonna take my treasure! Come on! of this very long, long tunnel. <laughs> Seth's gonna be rich after all these years. <laughs> it's silk sheets and Parisian whores from now on, mister. <laughs> what the goddamn hell is this? A glass eye. I'm sure whoever that belonged to treasured it very much. <laughs> Those stupid liars. Those stupid chicken shit maps. Making a damn fool of me. A glass eye! It's a glass eye! Stop with the tears and help me with Williamson's gang. And you can come up with another excuse to go exhume one of your old friends. Hunting dead man's treasure ain't done me no favors. Sure. Sure. I'm ready for the living. I'll see you and Mr. West Dickens over at Fort Mercer when you gentlemen is ready. If it ain't me, it's someone else. Mr. Marston, how are you, sir? I'm all right. I met up with your friend, Seth. Oh, <laughs> Seth of the Dead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> interesting fellow. <laughs> you don't meet many men these days with the moral fortitude to cut straight to the chase like that, do you? <laughs> Thankfully not, Mr. West Dickens. Yes, uh, contemporary society is remarkably harsh on professional exhumers. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, it was an art form valued more highly than literature? I believe Seth comes from that school of thought. <laughs> How very interesting. Look, you thought any more about our plan? Ah, your plan, dear boy, your plan. I am merely the help, uh, not mercifully the arbiter of wisdom. What you are, dear boy, is the man whose life I've saved twice now. A man who sells lies and deceit to unwitting people. Oh, 
A man who, if he doesn't help me, I won't think twice about putting a bullet through his skull and feeding the vultures myself. Uh, you see, Mr. Marston, you have the exterior of a violent man, but the soul of an angel, and that is what I think I cherish most about you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, <clears throat> but before we can attend to your particular problems, uh, um, Oh, we need some extra lubricant to oil the machinery of business. And uh, this being America, <clears throat> that lubricant with which we concern ourselves <clears throat> is money. Money? <clears throat> what are you talking about? Oh, oh, we need weapons. Armor plate for the wagon. Extra hands. <clears throat> and... I need some danger money. So, uh, let's sell some more of these cures. Sell cures? Around here? Do you want to see me lynched? <laughs> no. The sport of kings. Racing, my friend. The sport of kings. A noble activity without reproach. Exactly the kind of activity where a lying, cheating, degenerate like myself can prosper. <laughs> But come, let's finish the loading and we'll discuss it as we drive. <laughs> now, sir, do that tooth breach.
Thanks, mister. I'll take care of this cart for Mr. West Dickens. Come on, John. I suggest we be a hasty retreat. Let's go, my boy. I can't see many friendly faces around here. Right. Best remove ourselves from the stage before somebody decides they want their money back. Fine by me. Wasn't that fantastic? The tears of the crowd, the thunder of the wheels. The fallen rocks, the homicidal maniac. Oh, come on, John. Even a cold-hearted misanthrope like you must have found that just the tiniest bit exhilarating. Not the friendliest bunch, are they? They take the racing very seriously in these parts. And your participation was not entirely pre-approved. That was clear. Ah, sport, war, and heartache. <laughs> the guilty pleasures of mankind since the dawn of time. I'd get away from the men we just swindled before you start waxing too lyrical. Yes, yes, of course. Well done, sir. Well done. Having you as a ringer has netted us a fine profit. <laughs> we seem to be wasting time, old man. Oh, patience, my friend. The Trojan horse cannot run before it can walk, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Next, we need to procure some grand and overwhelming firepower. And for that, you need to contact an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Irish. Irish? Yes, uh, he's an interesting kind of fellow. Um, he usually can be found in uh, Armadillo or some other town around here on some Bacchanalian revel or such. <laughs> Great. An alcoholic arms dealer. What could be better? Mr. These fellers robbed a bank in Armadillo. I've been tracking them ever since. 
I'm a bit outnumbered. Would you mind lending your guns? You really made me so Thanks for your help, mister. Now I trust you'll return this safe to the banker in Armadilla.
never thought I'd see that again. I cannot thank you enough, sir. Just so you know, I don't take requests, mister. I'm looking for a man. Name's Peter. The fellow's meant to get married today. Seen him around? Who? Peter, what she said. <laughs> you ain't after no Pete Turner, are you? For all I know, where can I find him? Well, my memory escapes me when not properly stimulated. Well, let's see if we can refresh it. Five dollars will do. Or you could run a little errand for me. What do you need done? It's my wife. She packed her things this morning and left me. The dumb wench is still at the freight station waiting for the stagecoach. If you could convince her to take me back. Her name's Rose. I guess I'll go have a talk with her. Now, you'll need more than talk with that bitch. Why are you still here? Here, this might loosen your tongue. Truth is, Pete Turner ain't been an armadillo for near on 20 years now. Kind of a... Queer fella and all. Wasn't here every night. Sure as the moon in the sky. What happened to him? Well, <laughs> what happens to all of us? I reckon you'll find him at Odd Fellow's Rest. Yeah. That's where he'd be, I guess. Men with hats, pockets, bob,
Mr. Marston, sir, John Marston. Mr. Marston, don't be so childish. Come on, sir, I implore you. Okay, 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 so I made a few innocent mistakes when last we met, but my plan is still sound. Together we can conquer, if not the world, then certainly Bill Williamson. But first, you need me to do you a favor? <gasps> You read my mind. I can only deduce you've been taking my tonic, sir, as instructed. It can give the most ordinary of intelligences a remarkable insight. I'll give you insight. I'll show you what your guts look like. Please, sir, this show of petulance is nothing short of embarrassing. Think for a moment, sir. Think. I'm thinking about how much of my time you're wasting. <laughs> um, sir. Sir. I am about to do something which I greatly discourage in all wise and rational men. A selfless act for you. But, sir, before I act selflessly, allow me to act selfishly and sell some of my wares. 
Fair enough. Oh, good, sir. Come, and let's go visit some of our fine friends in the other oil business we have here in Plainview. These men need all the help they can get. Hard-working souls of uh, Plainview, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article which cures headache, neuralgia, uh, toothache, earache, backache, twelve... This man is a fucking charlatan. He just got done swindling us down at Cho Springs with this song and dance. I say we tar and feather him right now. I say we shoot the uh, bastard. I think it's time we take a business elsewhere. Uh, I apologize if science is not your forte. Good day, what and all. Somebody get this thing back! It looks like we've been scuppered. Let's get out of here. All right, two right shotgun. Let's go, my boy. I think we've outstayed our welcome here. Fun science, John. What do yokels like you know about science? I've given you enough chances to walk away. How can these people harbor such bitterness? Well, I ain't surprised. That tonic I drank at Ridgewood went through me like a dose of salt. Let's <laughs> go. 
Rusecka up ahead. My dear boy, you saved the day again. It always impresses me with the speed with which a group of men can turn from passive sheep into murderous wolves. I'm impressed with how you nearly got us killed back there. Uh, yes, uh, perhaps we should shell the tonics business for a period. Let's say we try our hand at racing again. There's a meet at Rathskeller. You're trying my patience, Mr. West Dickens. Well, I'm sorry, dear boy, but I'm only an aging vendor of exotic elixirs, not the bloody U.S. Cavalry. And forgive me if matters take some time to prepare. Mr. West Dickens! Ah, Mr. Marston! How wonderful to see you, sir. How wonderful. Are we ready, then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, nearly, sir. Barely nearly, sir. I just need some cash to get some extra hardware fitted to my old Trojan horse here. You, you what? <laughs> Never mind, sir. I can only presume that you have not enjoyed the benefits of a classical education, so I will not take umbrage if some of my illusions sail over your head, sir. I won't pretend to understand you, but I will endeavor to make you understand me. Either we do this right now, or I put a bullet in you and get on with my day. Please, I knew you were a violent man, Mr. Marston, but I did not think you were a stupid one. We need money to outfit my carriage, to turn a simple tradesman's vehicle into something more subterfuge. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you how we are going to gain said cash. Now I know that you ride very well. So come, sir, to Rathskeller Fork. <laughs> Let's go, my dear boy. I'll show you the way. Come on. So how are you, Tom? Okay, all things considered. Hopefully we can get through today without running into another army of your satisfied customers. Gentlemen, this will be a fair race. No shooting, stabbing, cliff pushing, rock throwing, cactus grinding, neck lassoing, setting fires, or other acts that causes the rider to unfairly lose his weight or bleed heavily or black out. Get yourselves ready. Set. Go. Yeah. Let's go.
mighty king he saw he conquered. <laughs> what a fantastic spectacle, John. Let's take a moment to bask in the glory of our victory. Have we got enough money now? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yes, once Seth and Irish have furnished their side of the bargain, I think we should be ready. Quite a team we've assembled, don't you think? A bunko, a grave robber, and a drunk. How could things possibly go wrong? Yes, boy, oh, you messed up properly this time, didn't you? You little paddy bastard. You thieving Mick Cunt. You got it all wrong, Welsh. All wrong. It was French, I promise. He said he was going to rip you off. Now he's ripping me off. Here, keep on talking there, Irish. In about 15 more seconds, your whole world's gonna turn black. <laughs> What's up, boys? Oh. Fuck off, boy. Oh. This don't concern you. When a man with a sing-song voice tells me to fuck off, it always concerns me, boy -o. Look here. This paddy bastard stole our guns. Tried to steal our horses. Lost clear on the matter. I never stole nothing, sir. Never did. Not in all my life. That French cunt is playing with the Welshman's tiny and ineffective mind. Push your mind. <laughs> anyway, you all got horses now. No one needs to die. Leave him be. Who do you think you are, boy -o? The bloody cavalry? Your voice is really starting to get on my nerves, boy -o. And you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. This is what happens when you poke your nose in. It wasn't like I didn't warn you. Should you? 
But Mr. Nigel West Dickens said you'd help me locate a machine gun. And since I just saved your life... Oh, I can't thank you enough for taking care of those two degenerates. Uh, untrustworthy, poor in personal hygiene, lacking in the finer qualities of a, a gentleman. Uh, what about the gun? It'd be my pleasure. Uh, she's magnificent government issue. It'll be a bit of a ride, but we'll get there soon enough. Uh, follow me, fella. Let's get this over with. The saloon's calling me. Come on, then. Let's find this boy. What's your name, friend? John. John Marston. Stroke of luck you came along, fella. I thought I'd drunk me last breakfast there for a second. <laughs> Who were those fine specimens of humanity? They was the only friends in the world. And boy, am I glad to see them bastards dead. We all met on the boat over a few years back, we did. Thick as thieves ever since, and that right there was the problem. Is it normal for friends in Europe to drown each other? Never trust a Welshman, me pa always told me. And he got his throat slit so he should know. The kind of fellas who will steal an acorn from a blind sow and then kick her for squealing. And as for that French bastard... He didn't sound very French. Not for now. The thieving bastards are holed up at the cabin by the lake. Can't wait to see the look on their faces when we blast in there. They'll be more surprised than a slut dog with their first porcupine. You best not be lying to me. Listen, fella, I didn't ask for your help back there. I don't owe you nothing. I'll decide what you do and don't owe me. I've had enough of your overly aggressive manner, fella. You don't know who you're dealing with here. Irish, I've met enough men like you to last me a lifetime. Let's go. You can make quick work of those fellas if they give you trouble. The gun's stored just inside that shack. What about you helping me out? Uh, I'll cover you from the ridge. I'm better from long range. It'll be a piece of cake, fella. Trust me. You ain't welcome here, mister. What the hell? Take him down, bro. It's not here. That lion sack of shit! This ain't nice, I know.
Where's that machine gun, Irish? Oh, Mr. Marston. Uh, I, I found you one. Uh. Found us one, Irish. Uh. We're in this together. Uh. You, me, and an assault on Fort Mercer. I'm the guy that saved you from getting killed back there, and who you owe your life to, remember? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. <laughs> you don't want it to happen to you again, do you, Irish? No, friend. I wants to buy you a drink. I wants to tell you how much she means to me, how special she is. And I want to tell you that if you don't produce a Gatling gun within the hour, you'll wish you'd been killed back there. <laughs> it's the whiskey, sir. <laughs> it gives me the memory of a newborn babe, as innocent as can be. And it makes me violently angry. Shall we go look for that gun, sir? <laughs> yes. Let's do that. Uh. Not a feller to give up easily, are you? I just get a tad confused from time to time. Honest mistake. If there's any more confusion, I'll finish what your friends in Armadillo started. Jesus, you're an impatient bastard, aren't you? Where's the gun, Irish? I hear some miners been blabbing about a machine gun they found. Apparently, they got it stashed up at Gap Tooth Breach. What do miners want with a machine gun? Shoot it at somebody, I suppose? Or sell it? I don't know. I've never been down a mine in Ireland. Sounds real fishy to me, Irish. I've just about had it with you and your game. You and Wes Dickens are so crooked, you can swallow nails and spit out corkscrews. Not fair now, Johnny. We should go around the side of Gaffo so the miners don't see us coming. I still don't know what miners would want with a machine gun. Miners are always spiky bastards. You spend too long without daylight and foxes, and it starts playing with your mind. I never heard so much shit come out of one mouth. Only telling you what I heard. Oh, and we'll need a wagon or something to get it out of there. That gun's heavier than sin. So how was I supposed to move it by myself last time? Two-faced little bastard. Easy there. Here we are. Let's stop here a moment to get a lie of the land. The entrance is plain to see, and there's a shaft them bastards used to haul out heavy ore. We, I mean you, can use that lift to get you and the gun to the surface. I do it all myself, but the mines play havoc with me sinuses. I'll find us a fine place to hide these horses, and then return with a borrowed flat wagon. I'll meet you at the mouth of the mine shaft. And Irish, I strongly advise you don't run off this time. Open fire! Who else wants so? Just walk away! Can I borrow this, friend?
not have this. Thank you. 
I thought I'd be looking at your carps being hauled up this lift. Load up and I'll engage the gears. She is. What a beautiful weapon. God's own gun. Ain't that the truth? I got us a borrowed flatbed parked down below. Don't let go of her. She's a beast. Short we ride now, and we'll have this executive peacemaker delivered to Old West Dickens. Uh. Uh. Just make sure it doesn't fall off on the way.
<sighs> Excuse me, Mr. Marston. Have you seen my father anywhere? No. He went out this morning to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. I don't know. The ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they've found nothing. Well, come on. Let's go look for him. Let's head out. He couldn't have gotten far. So long. Don't worry. We'll find him. He's not as young as he used to be. What if he's hurt himself? Your father can still handle himself just fine, Miss McFarland. He's built like an oak. You're probably right, but I can't help worrying. He's all I've got. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers, but five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the east and never came back. Must be getting on for 10 years ago now. He's a high and mighty banker in New York, according to his last letter. He should be here, helping you and your pa. I don't want his help. He can live his life any way he wants. But when I see those city fellers coming in on the railway, all dressed up like a sore toe, I fear a little for his soul. He switched his saddle for a tie, and that's fine. I just never met a man in a tie I could trust. Let's go. Yeah. Daddy! What happened? Nothing nice. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe the Baller twins, that bunch. Now you head back to the ranch right now and fetch your wagon. Yes, sir. Marston, you watch after her. I'll do that, sir. Come on, boy. Really? Come. What could have happened to those poor men? And their horses were dead, too. I think we should Let's get hurry. back there as soon as we can. Please stay Let's close. Let's go. Who could have done something like that? Come on. It's a bad idea to split up right now. Your boss seemed to have an idea who it was. Let's just do what he says and get the wagon. Those damn rustlers. I've got a good mind to head over to Pike's Basin myself. I don't think that's a good idea. And you're no better. How many men have you killed? Do you really want to know? It's disgusting. You never met the men I killed. Stay with me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Look, Mr. Marston, the barn is on fire. Go. Yeah. yeah. This ain't working! My side was! Get a move on! There's no way in through the front! Try and get in through the loft, Mr. Marston! Climb up the windmill!
You sure know how to handle yourself. Thanks, Marston. Yes, John, thanks. You, well, you saved the ranch. If you'll excuse me, I, I've got chores to attend to. Hey, wh hold on a second over there. Sincerely, John. Thank you. Well, I did all I could, Miss McFarland. Sorry about all the damage. That gang seems to really want you out of here. Yeah, well, my father fought Indians. I scarcely think we're gonna be frightened by some white trash. White trash can be pretty frightening. Well, they don't frighten me. Good. John, my family owes you a great debt. I think you got enough debt. You saved my life. All I ask of you is this. If I get back home and get my farm started back up, you'll sell me some cattle. I prefer doing business with people I know. Of course, Mr. Marston. It'd be my pleasure. Um, well, you get some rest. I've got to go see how my father's bearing up. I won't forget what you did here. You take care, lady. There might not be anyone around next time. I need it more than you now. Oh. 
Dalton, the bacon was sweeter than it is out here. You're getting my first tank. I don't have a clue. All right, but it's got to be something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him, find out what he knows. Fucking is. Where is she, Marston? Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum. Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? Because she hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child... Now, Drew, <laughs> nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Who the hell's that? Hey, buddy! <laughs> that be your next lucky mare. Even better! Good day, Mr. McFarlane! Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. Not if Drew McFarlane wants to see his bunny back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarlane! This is a nice girl you got there. <laughs> Get down from there! You know... Part of me's got to thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby and that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you'll get your daughter back, mister. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do. Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Whole government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas, or I will slit that horse throat myself. You boys have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah! What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. I owe her that. Please do. I'll teach you some respect for the law. Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Quick as you can, deputy. Make sure he's tied on good. Stay 
Stay with me, Marston! I won't let anything happen to her, sir. Yeah. Come on, let's get this charmer to Tumbleweed. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is who sent you. They made me come here. They gave me no choice. That's your federal government, Mr. Johnson. They come down here dressed as cocky as the King of Diamonds, talking a lot of flannel about helping us, about spreading peace and civilization in the West, but they brought nothing but trouble and taxes. I agree with you. Wolves in sheep clothing, all of them. Rob you, then make you pay to have someone investigate the crime on your behalf. People around here have been fooled into feeling protected when they're worse off than they were before. The fellas I know don't care about people. All they care about is lining their pockets. Why is this sorry son of a bitch so important to them? Norman Deeks, Williamson, right hand man. In other words, a glorified errand you boy. Wait, Marshal. I'll be back for you. Bill Standards have slipped. We already filled you with lead once, you ugly bastard. That's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid to ever be a leader. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. You know, for his sake, they'd best not have laid a finger on Miss McFarland. What is this place we're headed? Tumbleweed, a lonely, godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed, and that was that. Pretty soon, everybody had up and left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like Deke here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarlands, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I can ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable in different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. I know you helped, just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. up rules, but they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyways, just to spite me. Whoa. be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. 
I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. You bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. John, you lead Deke into town. Make the exchange. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. I hear those rancher girls like it in the rain. Maybe she won't want to go home. She's been fucked so good. What are you waiting for? Untie me, fillers! Wait, where's Bonnie, you bastard? <laughs> Trusting son of a bitch, ain't you? Bonnie, are you okay? I'm fine now, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> what the hell took you so long, you stupid man? Well, you weren't exactly helping me. If you think I'm gonna lower myself by making a joke about being all tied up, you got another thing coming. Come on. <coughs> <coughs>
Mister, <laughs> she's gone. Who is? My wife, she's gone. <laughs> she went out picking mushrooms in the hills. They're hanging rock and they got her. The stories are true. <laughs> What'd the police do about it? <laughs> oh, about as much as you'd expect. <laughs> Made me fill out a form. Beryl ain't strong, but she's a good girl. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Mister. Hello there. Hello, friend. Dear sir, hello.
miss. I ain't all there today. Hey! You know, John's the elected governor. He's going Have to open a seat. We need another poker day. player. Them being. You just got to write away. Sure, I'll join you for a while. What do you know? Turn heads, make your play. I'll call. Well, someone's four flushing, I'll bet. Looking a little hog tied. You only live once, right? Think I'm going to call. See every day, uh... Hmm, sure could have used that last hand. Call that. No funny dealing now. Hell, I'll take that. I call. Get ready to give me all your chips. I check. Ah, I fold. I call. Looks like you might have me on this one. I know your game. I'm gonna buy a new iron with these winnings. Okay, let's do this. How are you? Hello. You can make good money for. 
I'm gonna fold. I'm gonna drop my lasso around, Lady Luck. Reel her in. I'm looking a little hog tied. Call. Think I'll check. I see you want to play. Hell with this, I fold. Wow, you're real sure of something. I just ain't getting the cards. I know this next hand is gonna be my hand. I'm coming off the rim rock. Fold. I'm gonna call it. Call. going to check. Oh well, there's no gambling in hell anyway. I'm in this one. Interesting. Hope my luck turns next hand. I'm calling. That's a check for me. I'll check. Your choice, my friend. Look at you all pleased with your cards. Right, this is the one. Call you. That's a call for me. Someone's feeling the pressure. Check. Check. Hate when greens play too close to the belly. Time to get down to brass tacks. Boring. No thanks. I'll call. I like it.
What do you know? Well, someone's four flushing, I'll bet. Of you, fellas. Be glad to take your coin from you, pilgrim. A man like Whoever you needs a woman you. like you. Who are you? No, no, no. I marshal the best left heart post haste. Men starting to question his. Selection in the. I hear there. that Marshal pisses in a squat if you catch my meaning. I won't sell armaments to them thugs, whatever the profits may be. I can only put the Jeb Murphy name on top items. That's a fine deal. Business is what keeps this country great. Nice doing business. Well, I'm always after items of quality. Let's go! 
Tim. Welcome to my very own hellhole. Hate it. go. something for you, Sam. Howdy, mister. Seems to me you're a fine leather slapper, mister. Come to the right place. Old Jake and Zansky have laid up, I hear. You're stretching the blade. Thanks. Come back now. Hello there. You can see I carry the finest artillery. Making a mistake, friend. I ain't no steer here. Hello. That should do it. Hello. Good do of business. Been sound. So sorry, sir. Damn. Oops. <laughs> 
sister. Put them up. Irish, what are you doing? Who the hell are you? Give me that. I'm your old friend, Amnesia. Oh, good. Blimey. But I've come to tell you, if you ever pretend to forget my name or your debt to me again, I'll make sure you reach heaven before these two ladies. Now get down there. Oh, oh. oh Mr. Marston. How are you? Ashamed. Ashamed to know you. What the hell's wrong with you, robbing these gentlewomen and ladies of the Lord? I thought they was doxies. Ladies, I'm sorry about this man. He's unfortunately lost his mind to the demon drink. At least I hope he has, and he wasn't this stupid all along. So, uh, please excuse us. Now, Irish, that Gatlin gun doesn't work. I find that rather upsetting, don't you? Oh, heartbreaking. Which is why I was just coming to see you when the drink got the better of me. <laughs> ah. Come on. I know where we can find a, a parts for you. Ah. Mother fucking Mary. How about a drink or two, mister? I'm afraid I'm married. What are you looking at? Huh? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Huh? I can't stand to see a man walk around with such a dry pecker. Can I help? Are you coming or not? I just got me a shiny new blade from Spalding. You feel like letting me test it? What a lusty specimen you are. I like Ooh, that. that fresh air's got me head spinning like a top. Can't be good for a fella. Shut up, you lazy drunk. Before I stop your head spinning with a bullet. I resent that, Johnny. I've been working like a beaver on your behalf. You've been working like a weasel on my behalf. Bushwhacking defenseless ladies of the cloth? You must have been raised on sour milk, Irish. What are you talking about? I'm a good Catholic boy. You're a booze-blind coward. And you're a hypocrite, Marston. You've robbed just as many innocent folks as me. I tried to only rob those who had more than they deserved. Your brain gone, bust. Christ! The church Ain't has more money than anybody. Where are we going, Irish? Just to the warehouse here in Thieves Landing. I'm telling you, Johnny boy, it's all set up. We're meeting this pal of mine at the back door of the office. Hobble tongued feller by the name of Shaky. And he's got the ammunition we need? Jesus, stop fretting, will you? I knows about guns front, back, and sideways. You're gonna be real familiar with mine if things keep on this way. This is it. Come on, Smiler. Damn it. That stuttering bastard said this would be open. Come on, let's see if we can get in around the back. I'm beginning to lose my patience. Huh? I'm starting to think it's so funny, Johnny boy. I can't even sneeze these days without you being there to catch the grip. This is your last chance, you good-for-nothing shyster. You've already wasted too much of my time. Open. Shaky's all right, but I don't trust the gang of fools he runs with. Shaky's made the arrangements, and he'll. Oh. 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 Oh, shit. Who you working with? I, I, I don't know. Oh, shite. Sounds like Shaky's only gone and got oh. himself found out. <laughs> all right. Now all we have to do is find out who you work with. You hear me? Shaky, you wretched fucking son of a whore. Suck my again! <laughs> oh. Labor relations don't sound like they're exactly at an all-time high. Uh, you sneak in and get poor Shaky loose. I'll go get the wagon. Good luck, Marston. He's a good man, that Shaky. Again! 
All right, work your usual magic. I'll go get the wagon ready. Thank you for your kindness, mister. I th 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 thought I, w I was dead, man. My kindness is only as good as the bullets you can fetch up for me and your friend Irish. Let me down, and you'll be a dead man. This is gonna be one hell of a fight. Let's head before the door. Follow me. You the bastard! Who's next? This is too easy, fellas! Oh, yeah. I'll take you, you all!
bastards! Now we're even. Half even, Shaky. You still owe me for them morphine pills to calm your nerves. Sh -sh 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 -sh. <laughs> you'll, you'll get your half more, you d d d dirty fu 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 fucking snake. Uh, bu 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 All right, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go. Fucking. Fuck. Oh, my virgin ears. Fuck. All right, hop on. I'll get us out of here. Did you have fun in there, you and Shaky? I killed a lot of men for this damn machine gun of yours. I'm sorry I missed all the dramas. You always miss all the drama. There must be cobwebs growing on that holster of yours. Someone's got to drive the wagon, don't they? Teamwork, Johnny boy. That's my game, not just the glory like you. enough ammunition here to take down a small country, fella. I'm gonna need it. Bill Williams has got himself an army. So I guess this is where we part ways, Johnny Marston. Or maybe not, friend. You're gonna be right alongside me when I take on that fort. After all you put me through, it's time you pull the damn trigger for once. Show me what a big, bad killer you really are. Uh, yes, of course. What am I thinking? Don't worry, you can count on me. I just hope I don't steal all your glory. Wouldn't be right or proper. Marston, we'll have Wes Dickens's wagon rigged and ready to go soon enough.
Follow Charlie. He's a good one to snip out trouble. Stay close to Charlie. Hola. Fellas had it coming to him.
tough one, ain't you? Go! John? Marshal? Gentlemen! <clears throat> it's time. We must go. Why? What's happening? Sap has managed to get himself inside. <laughs> but we can't leave it too long, or they will soon realize how very curious he is and remove him from the premises. Or slit his throat and watch him bleed to death. But for a minute, he will delight and amuse them. That's when he'll get us inside. Okay. Marshals of the law, when the shooting starts, take that as your cue to start awarding each other medals. Hmm? I mean, take that as a cue to get inside and clean up the mess. Oh. All I care about is Williamson. It is vital we stop him. Agreed. That man is a stone-cold killer. Williamson's a proud fool. The question is which will win out between his pride and his instinct for survival. Ensconce yourself in the back of my wagon, John, so that we can make our grand entrance. Come on, let's go! All right, good. Now just stay put until I tell you otherwise. That scoundrel Seth had better not let us down. Once we're inside and I've lulled our adversaries into a false sense of security with some beguiling sales patter, I will give you the signal. What signal? The moment you hear a sharp rap on the side of the wagon, Rise like the phoenix and start shooting like you've never shot before. This is it, my dear boy. The moment of truth. Me and you, John. One last time into the breach. This is going to have to be the performance of my life. I hope my nerves don't get the better of me. I'll be honest with you, John. I'm a little jittery. John? John? It reeks of miracles back here. Thank God. Now I'll be ready with that machine gun, my dear boy. I'll be a sitting duck in there.
Greetings, my good men. <laughs> what would you say if I said immortality was at hand? What would you say if I told you I could teach you to fly? <laughs> what would you say if I told you I could turn a man into a beautiful woman? <laughs> Impossible, yes, once, but no more. Gentlemen, I bring you wisdom from the East. I have here in this wagon some of the finest goods, the best medicines, and the newest inventions available for you and your families. Exotic trinkets from the far reaches of the earth, elixirs that give vigor and strength. <laughs> and uh, for you men of physical skill and athletic physique, uh, this miraculous elixir can keep the muscles supple and relax the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of vigor and freshness to the whole system. Why, some men have reported to me that after drinking it for one month, they can chew through steel. <laughs> Dang pig, them cock sucking some bitches escaped the other side of the fort. All right, let's go. Let's find those bastards. I need it more than you now. I ain't leaving until you give me Williamson.
That's the last of them. We still can't find Williamson anywhere. Hey! It's the snake oil guy! Get away and let me in, for goodness sake! That fool must be hiding. Man, it is time to start tearing this place apart and find out where he's cowering! You got sense of urgency here, please? Open the gate! It's the snake oil guy! Oh, Get the, the goddamn gate open and lock it behind him! Oh, we've got company, gentlemen. These scoundrels have got reinforcements riding this way. Oh, my good lord above. There must be a hundred of them. Mr. Marston, we got a live one. He says, Bill's already run off to Mexico yesterday morning. <laughs> You'll never get him. Javier Escuela. He's gone to see Javier Escuela. That should make things interesting. Where in Mexico? How should I know? Oh! <laughs> Where in Mexico, you little shit? <laughs> Some place near Chuparos. I think he said. <laughs> That's bandit country. 
too perfecting, Rosa. Oh, I'll take you there, John. I'm real popular down there. You just meet me at the ferry. I've got lots of friends down south. I'll see you at the ferry, Irish. I'll just get me things. I'm sorry about this, John. I guess you'll be heading to Mexico. So it would seem. How is it down there? Wonderful. A sweet, peace-loving people with the love of social justice. May you always find coin in your pocket. It's been a pleasure spending time with you, boy. You too, Mr. West Dickens. Marshal. All right, boys. That's enough. That's a good price. <laughs> yes, well, that's what makes you such an interesting fellow, Mr. Irish. <laughs> ah, Mr. Marston, I've come to wish you well. How are you, sir? I'm okay. It seems that our friend Mr. Irish here is well-connected south of the border. Oh, it's true. Uh, they love me down there. It's like a second home. I've got more friends than you could shake a stick at, should you so desire. So you know the way. Oh, it's easy. We just get on me raft here and let the current sweep us away to paradise. Come on, then, Dobby. 
I'm not sure your idea of paradise and mine are quite the same, Irish. Relax, we'll have a great time and we'll find your man Williamson no bother. I hope so. Hey, come on now. And look at it this way. I know we ain't exactly old pals, but, you know, have I ever done you wrong? No, but not through lack of trying. Hey! Well, you boys have fun down there. I shall miss you, John Marston. Thank you. Where are you headed? You know me? Oh, um, London or Paris or, uh, or maybe Peking. I'm a traveling man, sir. This land is much too small for the likes of me. <laughs> Well, try not to get yourself killed. Oh, well, yes, we men of science are not a very loved bunch in this land of myth and superstition. I'm off to the civilized world where men like myself are revered and given medals. Ha! Hmm. Have fun. The same to you, sir. The same to you. <laughs> Nice of you to turn up for once, Irish. What do you mean? In usual fashion, you conveniently missed all the action at Fort Mercer. What can I say? I woke up with me head in a pair of tits, and it felt ill-mannered not to get reacquainted with them. At least you got your priorities straight. You know me, Johnny boy. I'll be late to me own funeral. They say God invented whiskey to stop the Irish from ruling the world. Look out, bandits! Catch the rope, Irish! We're sitting ducks here! Goody Nara! You ain't getting a better penny out of me! And this fellow's got a nasty crush. It was only a little. We'll ride the river out. No point trying to land till we're well away from these bastards. Hey, there's more ammunition in the box at the back of the raft. I want that many parents swear!
the fourth time your so-called friends have nearly got me killed. I thought you said they loved you over here. They do. At least the lassies do. Oh, them big brown eyes turn stone into butter, they would. And the Mexicans know how to make a bottle of liquor, too. What, that porky? <laughs> now there's a drink as would take the frost out of a frosty morning. Oh, you're gonna have some fun. I'm just here for Bill Williams. Well, I'm glad to be back. This place is a wild devil's paradise. Apart from the fellas trying to kill you. Down here, they call me El Rato, the cat, on account of his stealth and cunning. I'm pretty sure Rato means rat, my friend. I like it, though. A little more inventive than Irish. Well, you Americans never were very creative with your use of language, was you, John Marston? They're still coming behind that big rock! Well, you will insist on fraternizing with a notorious Irish outlaw. You must be taking up another Irish fella. On top of the cliff.
Johnny boy, I really will. I doubt you'll remember any of it, Irish. I see that. The current should put us ashore up ahead. God damn it, there's another clue. These horses look fresher <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> Before you degrade these poor fools any further, tell me where I'm headed. Of course, of course. Let me think. You do know people down here, aside from your friends who welcomed us on the way. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I was real drunk last time I was here, John. You know how it is. I, I, I met an American guy, uh, I saw him shoot a man. Drank with him in the village of Chuparosa. Funny guy! <laughs> uh, or was that Canada? No, that was Canada. Guy here, not funny, but he's real nice. Uh, failing that, you could try the provincial governor, uh, Colonel something or other, some Spanish name. He's based out of Escalera. I uh, played three card stud with him. Uh, or was it four card Monty? I forget. He was a real nice chap, or maybe he was a real bastard. <laughs> I was real drunk last time, John. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your help. Oh, let me guess. You got to be on your way. Uh, the famed hospitality isn't what it once was, and I've never been known to overstay me welcome. So off I go to greener pastures. Good luck, John. You're an angry and a fat, ugly man, but not a bad one.
Let's make this quick. Let's go. Nothing, señor. Ya es que era un de caballo y domestícalo. ¿Estás listo, amigo? Are you ready? Con el otro. No interrumpas, pendejo, la deja en la casa. Y les digo, de aquí para acá, chingan a su madre. ¿Qué? Y ¿Qué no cae mejor? ese güey. Y de aquí para acá, son pendejos. ¡Eh, hey, gringo! ¿Hablas español? No, sir. Mm. Pardon, pero. Yo habla un solo poquito español. <laughs> poquito. Habla inglés. <laughs> oh, sí, gringo. Hablo mucho inglés. Sí. Hablo filthy fucking bean eater. Hablo slippery little Mexican. Oh. Hablo little piece of shit. Shit. <laughs> Comprende, amigo. Comprende. <laughs> hey, what are you doing here, gringo? I don't remember inviting you to my country. I don't think you did, amigo. I mean you no harm. <laughs> you mean us no harm? This is funny. <laughs> what harm could you do to us exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, amigo. Now, I appreciate the welcome committee, but I'd hate to spoil a beautiful afternoon on such beautiful land with any further unpleasantries. If you'll excuse me. Uh, holy Gringo, I think you're forgetting something. A little taxation. <laughs> <laughs> I have a large family. <laughs> I too have a family, friend. So that we may see our families again, I suggest we part ways amicably. <laughs> Can I see the boots, Gringo? I think you can see him from where you're standing just fine, senor. Take off the boots, Americano. As you wish. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good indeed, sir. What a great way to improve border relations. An illiterate farmer crossing the river, coming into their civilization and butchering the local peasants. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Don't mention it, old man. You kill peasants, you become a peasant. I never aspired to be anything more. <laughs> 
A socialist, huh? No wonder you left America. I'm many things. Most of them bad. But a man of political principles? No. Well, then I fear Mexico may not be for you, sir. Don't you worry about me. Oh, but I do worry. An angry man a long way from home? A man who handles a gun as sloppy as you? I can handle a gun okay, partner. Yeah, as long as you're killing quail or peasants. But if you have to face another man, you don't stand a chance. And you do? I can show you a few tricks. Come with me. Hold on. What's your name? <laughs> that doesn't matter anymore. And you? I never had a name, mister. I was raised in an orphanage. <laughs> a real American, huh? Wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> Well, you won't make it in the circus, but you can shoot. Keep on practicing. Thank you, old man. <clears throat> now, who are you? No one interesting. Who are you? <laughs> Landon Ricketts. Not a name that means much anymore. It means a little. You were famous when I was a boy. Yeah, killing men's a strange kind of fame. I was the fastest in my time. I must have been. I'm the only one left. What are you doing here? Living quietly. Waiting. For what? I don't know. And you? I'm looking for a couple of men. Bill Williamson, Javier Escuela. <sighs> Escuela's from here. It could be. This whole place is teeming with a with Americans on the run, mercenaries, locals hell-bent on revolution. Revolution? Another one? <sighs> yeah. Never really is. This whole place has been a hotbed for revolution since before the Spanish left. Now there's another local guy running around promising the peasants their freedom. Ah, <sighs> just like the last two or three. Local government? Foul bunch. Colonel Allende, he runs this place like a feudal king. He's an awful individual. Is that so? Yeah. Until someone puts a bullet in his head. Come on, let's get back to it. You gotta keep that back straight. Otherwise, it makes the gun jump. See if this Schofield makes a difference. Now, that's a real gun. so hard, was it? Come on, I've got another idea. The birds around here are always raising hell, scavenging and scaring the life out of the locals. I say we put your newfound skills to the test while doing a public service for the good people of Chuparosa. Ain't we gonna spook the town folk with all this shooting? This is from the man who walked in here earlier and gunned down three bandits in the middle of the street. Here we'll do. I'm gonna scare up some birds. Let's see if you can take down more than one at a time. Don't be pathetic. Get back here.
Señor Ricketts, señor Ricketts, señor Ricketts, señor Ricketts, por favor, señor. Our back wagon's under attack just outside of town. We need your help again. Whoa, slow down, Ramon. We'll take care of it. Thank you, señor. Again, you are the savior of this town. Well, my friend, are you ready to take a less theoretical exam? Sure. I don't think I ever rode with no savior before. <laughs> Let's haul out. Time we put you to work on some bigger prey. Go! So why are you looking for these two men? It's a long story. We used to ride together. We was all friends once. Only a buzzard feeds on his friends. There must be a high bounty on their head. What would you do if somebody took the people you love and told you they'd die if you didn't do as they asked? Oh, there. Look over there. They're in trouble, all right? Come on. That's enough! Mr. Ricketts. I didn't say I'd become a coward. I'm not gonna stand by and watch good people suffer. They've been beaten down for too long. They don't know how lucky they are. Damn right they don't. My sorry cast over the little menace. Sano y salvo. Nunca podré agradecer lo suficiente. Buy me a whiskey later, and we'll call things about even. Muy interesante. Gracias, amigos. Mr. Marston, how the devil are you? I'm fine. How are you, Mr. Ricketts? I'm good. I'm glad you're here, because these men were just telling me about Mr. Escuela. Javier Escuela? Emilio, let me ask you something. His nombre is Javier, Señor Escuela? Is Javier to see? No sé, señor. <sighs> he doesn't know. I got that bit. Ask him, was he about five foot eight? Mustache? Did he have an American in tow? A big American? Emilio, the Stabacon, uh, Grande Americano? Yo no sé. No. Ag again, I got that. But they do have his sister. Emilio's, I mean. 
She's a fine young woman, a teacher, a human being, not the clothed vermin so many people seem to have turned into. Tell him I'm sorry. When a man's family is involved, you need a little more enthusiasm than mere apologies. I have enough worries, sir. This man's problems pain me, but they're not quite my own. Those who sit on the fence make a choice in their own way. Don't you think, Mr. Marston? Of course. And what about you, Ricketts? A man living in the past? A man who ran away from home? What choice did you make? I'll tell you what choice I made. I'm a fighter, sir, and I'll fight to the end. I think we should get going. I'm gonna take the train. You can come with me or ride ahead to El Matadero. I've been hearing some things about you, John Marston. Really?
It's the only way to travel, so they keep telling me. We'll get off at Casa Madrugada and ride from there. Come on, horses are over here. Come on! Hey! Gah! Come on, first stop, El Matadero. We need to find a man called Carlos. I was told he could help us. We'll ask around when we get there. But we don't want to draw attention. See if you can keep your gun holstered for once. You're the hero around here, Mr. Ricketts. Not me. What does the army want with this Luisa girl, anyway? She's a rebel, and apparently close to their leader, Reyes. She's a pretty young thing. That's normally reason enough for Alinde. So I've heard. She's a good woman, a teacher. If they lay a finger on her, I swear I'll feed those bastards their balls. Looks kind of sleepy, don't it? Let's go! All right, let's find this Carlos guy. Carlos. See? Si. We're here for Luisa. Is she still being held up in the caves? Yes. She's still up there. Who's the cowboy? We're here to help. Mm, muy bien. I can distract the guards. You and the gringo can get inside. Let's do it. I will keep them talking, senor. The rest I will leave to you. All right, let's find Luisa. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué quieres? No puedes estar aquí. Te hace calor hoy. Bien bochornoso, ¿verdad? No lo voy a decir otra vez. No puedes estar aquí. 
Eh, oye, soy yo, Carlos. Pues trabajo en el matadero. No me importa quién eres. Esta es una zona militar prohibida. Vete a casa. Me gustan sus botas. Muy bonitas. Mi hermana tiene las mismas. Pinche campesino de mierda. Te voy a colgar al lado de tus cerdos. Váyanse al infierno, traidores. That's our cue. Follow me, we'll shoot our way in there. Where's my cover, Marston? Te voy a matar! Oh, Jesus! Toma, hola! Maybe you'll give... is coming with us. What have you got for me? Dynamite to get it open. Keep watch while I get it ready. Stand back, damn it! Here goes! Come on, boy! Poor girl's barely alive. Let's get the hell out of here before any more of them show up. Oh no, you. What can I say, partner? You clearly don't.
it's you or me, friend! Looks like Carlos left us some horses. Come on! Let's go before any more of them show up. Faster! This is getting us Talk about cutting it fine. Luisa, gracias a Dios. Thank you for saving me. You're a good man. Friends of the people of this land. Was someone named Harvey Escuela one of the men holding you? No. I don't know. I don't think so. But I remember that name from prison. Bad people spoke of him. I told you, John, he's still in Mexico. Okay, then. I guess we'll keep looking. Uh, yeah. Uh, Someone else. Excuse me. Por unos 
pesos podemos retirar a mi cuarto y conocernos mejor, ¿eh? No me toques. I fold. No tengo nada. I fold. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mr. Marston. How you keeping, sir? Just fine, thank you. And you? Oh, very well, sir. Thank God my wife died. Unlucky in love, lucky in cars. Cars on. Champagne for everyone. Keep playing, Mr. Ricketts. Oh, I'm sorry, Herr Muller. I'll keep playing you in servitude for the rest of your life on Earth, if that makes you happy. Yes, I shall indeed, sir. Well then, your deal. <laughs> oh, Marston, would you like to join us? I don't think so. I'm just gonna have a drink. Oh, come on. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, then. Gentlemen, the... Namakshon! I wonder if you're also as lucky as Mr. Ricketts here. Always a pleasure playing with you, Mr. Muller. Call. Nothing like a game of poker to warm the soul. Hmm. A little low, don't you think? I'll call. Interesting. I'll call. I fault. Let me see. Both as lucky as each other. How interesting. And there was me thinking I wasn't going to make any money today. Mr. Marston, I hope you realize you're in the presence of one of the keenest German minds in all of Mexico. That's better. Now I'll fold. Not for me. You too must... You fucking cheat! Excuse me? You fucking looked in my fucking cards, you fucking cheat! Now, Herr Muller, let's calm down. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Your Yankee friend here is a fucking cheat. Easy there, Germany. Calm yourself down. Oh, yeah. You know exactly what you did. Yeah, I know exactly what I did, friend, which was nothing. Now, I'd prefer it if we could all play a friendly game and no one get hurt. You, you planted this guy, Ricketts. Now, why would I do that? I've already beaten you. Now, calm down and let's finish the game. There's no, no more cards game. Ease up there, friend. There must be a name for this. An impasse, sir. An impasse. We could all die here and now. I'm not fighting you, Ricketts, but the Yankee him I don't like. He's done you no harm, Muller. He's done me no good either. Outside, winner takes the pot. The winner will take what he wants. The other man will be in no position to argue. Sanchez will be my second. 
As you wish, Germany. As you wish. Walk with me, John. I want to make sure you know how this is going to work. A duel is all about timing. If you pull your gun too soon, you'll be less accurate. After you draw, pick your shots carefully, like I showed you. Once you've picked your marks, the rest, my friend, is in the hands of fate. Come on, Yankee! I'm a busy man! As soon as he draws, put him down. You should have stayed home, Yankee! ourselves a drink. I think Mr. Muller's buying. Your health. <laughs> you, uh, the man like Marston, see? <laughs> you like killing? Watch me cut her throat. Nice friends you got here, Mr. Ricketts. <laughs> to you, Marston. Eh, peleamos ahora, eh? We fight now. <laughs> Careful, Marston. I know that girl. No puede ser. Ayúdame, alguien. Oh, Dios mío. Say, you tourists certainly bring peace and prosperity to this land. Then again, I doubt Muller will be missed. He wasn't much of a poker player. My apologies, mister. Clumsy of me. I'm afraid my need is now greater than yours. <laughs> hey, Gringo. Mr. Ricketts, come on in. Sit down and have yourself a drink. Sure. Say, any word of Javier Escuela? Uh, no, nothing yet. Say, why are you after him anyway? We're old friends. We was kind of educated together. <laughs> so what is this, some kind of high school reunion sort of thing? Something like that. Well, well you've killed people. You lived the life. <clears throat> that I have. And I tried to stop. I mean, I don't know. I tried to go straight. I did. I left the gang after the gang left me. Left me to die after I'd been shot. They'd all gone crazy anyhow. Our old leader, a fella you probably heard of. Anyway, he more or less lost his mind, went and shot a bunch of people unfair-like. 
I got shot in a robbery. They left me, and I left them. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. <laughs> Already had me a woman, got me a farm, then I got me more trouble. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Been sent to track down the men I used to run with. Track them, kill them. Well, if you don't, someone else will. There's no escape. Look at me, I spent 25 years killing men. Look at me now, sitting around here like some low-rent would-be messiah. <laughs> We're relics. Come on, have yourself another drink and let's wallow in a little self-pity. Sounds like a plan. Your health. Mr. Ricketts, Mr. Ricketts, thank the Lord I have found you. And you, Mr. Marston. Will you sit down? You all right? I'm well, sir. But Allende is sending more men to the death. Prisoners who have not been tried. A prominent writer, Castilla, and a local official whose only crime was not putting the small holders on the street when they were late with taxes. Writers and government officials. For once, I agree with Allende. Some men need to be killed. Mr. Ricketts! No, I was just joking. Where are they? Out near Escalera. Let's hang up our self-pity and go shoot ourselves some bad guys. You're gonna be all right. Thank you, both of you. Almost out dead. Let's head for Escalera. Nosotros, No rush. I'm sure they'll hold the execution until we get there. Luisa was pretty shaken up. She's angry. This war is getting dirtier by the day. People are being executed for just having an opinion. Linde seems to have more enemies by the day. Perhaps you would know. Rumor has it you've been making all kinds of new friends. I don't pay much attention to rumors. Side of the fence to the other. You might just get impaled on it. I have to find these two men. With respect, how I do it is no concern of yours. Choose your tone wisely, partner. Remember who you're talking to. How could I ever forget? And who are you, John Marston? Apart from a rat feeding every other hand he can find, my name means something. All you've done is kill a few peasants, and the only real outlaw you've taken on dropped you like a bad habit. Now, I'd politely ask you to watch your tone, Rick. All I'm saying is, maybe there's a reason why people around here don't want to talk. You must miss your family. It's the only thing that keeps me going. You know, you remind me a lot of myself. How I used to be. Stubborn and angry. You ain't... Do you see that? Prison wagons. That must be them. This is our chance. See if you can take control of that prison wagon. Go!
Now, we'll handle it from here. I know you got other matters to attend to. It's been nice riding with you, Mr. Ricketts. <laughs> and you, too. You took me back to another time. Talk to Louisa. She'll help you, and she's well-connected in that other land. I hope you find what you're looking for, Marston. You know what I'm looking for. <laughs> if you say so, Marston. If you say so. What do you want, gringo? What are you doing here? Have you heard? There's a war going on. My name's John Marston. I've been sent here to retrieve a couple of men. Can I speak to your commander? You want to talk to my boss, gringo? I guess. Because I'm not good enough for you? No, sir. You think you're better than me? You come to my country, my poor little country, and you think you can be friends with the president? Oh, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Things must have come out wrong. Maybe you can help me. You'll be sorry, friend. <laughs> relax! I mean, relax! <laughs> sure. Somewhere between a threatening stare and the soldiers armed to the teeth? Yeah. Yeah, you had me. Welcome to Mexico, amigo! Let's come meet, drink. And then we'll talk. My name is Capitan Vicente de Santa. John Marston. My country is in pain, John Marston. Terrible pain. The rebels have seized the people by the throat and destroyed a way of life. 
I'm no politician, sir. <laughs> and I am uh, no soldier, a killer. Mm -hmm. But we are both beholding to our time. A brave man, perhaps you have heard of him. Coronel Alande. He's trying to preserve the order in our province. To keep our civilization alive. It is tough. The people are confused and usually swayed. Sometimes in the service of what is right, you gotta do terrible things. <laughs> it breaks my heart. I also am no moralist, sir. I wish I enjoy your freedoms, Mr. Marston. I'm trying to find a man, an American, an outlaw named Bill Williamson. I believe he came here to seek protection from another outlaw named Javier Escuela. You're no moralist, but you hunt outlaws? So it would seem. You heard anything of these men? I am the government, or what is left of it. Outlaws seek each other. They're possibly hiding with thieves and killers who pose as freedom fighters in the hills around here. They're united under one traitor named Abraham Reyes. Where could I find this Reyes? If I knew, I would be there, hunting him with everything that is true within me. Reyes finds you. Like cholera. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> But it's possible, though. My men are trying to lure him into a trap. Possibly you could ride with us. And if everything goes OK, I'm sure the coronel will help you. OK. Vámonos! Are you going to ride with me? Vamos, caballo vago. So, caballo. Hold on tight. We're in a hurry. You did not expect such a warm welcome from the Mexican army. I can see. I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't even crossed the border and I was being shot at. You will hear a lot of words like tyrant and oppression here. Words of the peasants have been taught, but do not understand meaningless words. The army is suffering uh, a crisis of reputation. Even I've heard about the colonel down here. He's not famous for his compassion. This is the point. Have you met Coronel Allende? Do you know him? No. Like a papagayo? He just repeat lies you heard. Maybe. Allende is a good man, a strong man. He carries the weight of a million problems on his shoulders. Am I supposed to pity him? You gringos are so quick to judge. You love to talk badly of other people because it makes you feel better about yourselves. Maybe you should look in the mirror. You're the one talking about this, and I ain't here to make judgment on the way of your government. I've got enough problems with my own right now. now. This isn't America, Senor Marston. We are poor. Kindness must take a different form. What is better, to pull your arm around a hungry man or to beat him until he grows some food? It's not far now. Are you ready? Ready for what? We will lure the rebels into a trap. There's a train leaving to Parosa soon. We're going to escort it. They will think it's a supply train. There are no supplies on it. Very clever. We must throw the rats out of their holes. Give them some bait they can refuse. Come on! The train is waiting. Yeah! Follow me! Stay with the train, senor. Let's go! The rebels are in for a surprise. I hope you know how to use the gun in your master.
dead! Muerto!
What do you want, gringo? You can take your horse or ride on the wagon. So, Mayo, so. It's not far now. Are you ready? Ready for what? We will lure the rebels into a trap. There's a train leaving to Parosa soon. We're going to escort it. They will think it's a supply train. But there are no supplies on it. Very clever. We must throw the rats out of their holes. Give them some bait they can refuse. Come on! The train is waiting.
Good thing for Mexico today. Coronel Allende will be very pleased. Los rebeldes están robando el tren. Levántese, perezoso, que sepa que le estoy pagando. Marston, you're going to have to do something. What? You have to go out there and start the train before it crosses the bridge. Yeah. Todavía, levántese. Ay, usted joder, también. Y allá atrás, muévase. ¿Qué le pasa a usted? Uno. Ay, Dios mío, levántese. Ya mismo.
¡Eres llorón, maricón! ¡Me das asco! ¡Hablas lealtad, pero eres transparente! ¡Estarás aplaudiendo cuando mi cabeza está en pelado! ¿Verdad? No, 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 mi excelencia. Mis hombres y yo estamos trabajando noche y día por su honor. ¿Honor? ¿Qué eres, un muchacho? ¡Jovencito sin vergüenza! ¿Qué diablos es este cabrón? Yes, that's the man who helped us defeat Reyes. The man I spoke to you of. <laughs> A friend of Mexico. Hello, sir. Hola, gringo. So you are the bounty hunter, huh? Have you found your prey yet? No, sir. Ah, perhaps you come to hunt me, huh? Your country loves to make trouble in mine. Perhaps, but it isn't so. Ah, perhaps I should tie you to a horse and let it drag you around town. Or let the dogs fight you, huh? <laughs> then see what you say. I'd say the same thing. I'm here to bring two men to justice, nothing more. Your politics or ideas of entertainment are not my concern. Yeah, I suppose not. But it's on two years. Sinceramente, espero que me encontraste alguna compañía más interesante que ese bruja que me traíste anoche. Let me ask you this, sir. Do you know anything of the men I'm looking for? Escuela is from this province. His uh, father was a borracho, a drunk who worked as a laborer on land cultivated by my uncle. Men like that are natural allies for Reyes. My people have lived and worked here for a hundred years. We brought civilization. And these people, these fucking monkeys, despise us. We brought them God! And they turned their back on him. Now I fight to help them from themselves, to save them from themselves. I see in their faces that they would kill me if they could. <laughs> they see only a tyrant. That is the way it is. These people need a ruler. Well. Sorry to hear that. Sorry? Why be sorry? It is a way of mankind. A fight between two forces. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. But I know one thing, Senor Marston. Force, <laughs> force must be used if you are to have your own way. I'm sure. Now, perhaps you can uh, do me a favor while I find these men for you. After we find the men. Then I'll help in any way I can. Ah, that, 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 that. You are in no position to negotiate. Now, por favor, a bunch of these idiots men are fighting at Tesoro Azul. Now, you head there and you lend your support. <sighs> Baboso, ¿cuántas veces voy a decirte? No ponga detrás de mí. ¿Qué eres, cabrón? No está mi sombra. Vaya. Follow me. We must hurry. Let's go. So I finally met your great leader. He certainly lives up to his reputation. What would you know about leadership? Only that most can't handle power. It is easy to criticize power when you have never had it yourself. I've never been in the presence of a strong man before. I have seen the pictures of your country in the newspapers. Men grinning and decorating themselves like women. Vanity is the legacy the British left behind. Look, I don't know the fella. Just saying. That's how he treats his own men. Coronel Allende controls any situation he's in because he knows that situation can never be allowed to control him. It is what a leader must do. And in any case, you had not noticed, we're fighting a war. We're all under a lot of pressure. Pressure to find young girls? The Colonel needs recreation like everyone else. He does not have time to court women. He's waging a war on ignorance, and he's impatient for victory. He's trying to inspire wisdom in those more stupid than himself. Our men left some time ago. We're already late. Come on, let's see if you can ride. You're built to kind on that horse.
qué tardaste tanto? ¿Y quién es este gringo? Octavio, por favor. Cada hombre ayuda. I hope you fight better than this little girl, gringo. Come, let's have some fun. I heard the little horse crying in that house over there. <laughs> Remember, nobody takes them before Allende. We did all this just to get women for Allende? <laughs> no, that's just a bonus. This village is riddled with rebels. Make sure they don't have homes to come back to. There are fire bottles over there. Use them to burn down some of these houses. And what makes you think I'd do that? You want to find Javier Escuela, don't you? John, you're helping Mexico. Vámonos, muchachos. Buen trabajo. Yo me quedo aquí para vigilar el gringo, capitán de Santa. Get the fire bottle. It is time to finish what we started. Por aquí, imbécil. ¿Por qué no me sigues? We're not leaving until you finish this.
Isn't that beautiful? You really are pathetic. You need to relax. Come back to the villa and sample some of the new girls before they spoil. What's your problem, Parker? What have you got for me? Mr. Merson, ride with us. We've been betrayed. What's happened? If there's no time, ride with us. Then we'll find the men you seek. Come. I have men waiting for us. Just outside of Escalera. Vamos! Yeah. What's the hurry, DeSanta? Where are we going? Ahora, ¿a dónde vamos a parar? Abraham Reyes tiene un verdadero ejército. Dicen que hay cientos de hombres apostados a Torquemada. Creo que somos muy pocos. Get on the wagon. We do not have time for this. Aston, wake up. We're almost there. Keep your eye out. I have a bad feeling about this. Rebels! Hold them off! We're not fucking... Has been. Was he that deranged captain in Sora Azul? Is he leading this attack? He? Espinosa does not lead anything. I thought you was the same rank. He is an angry dog we let out to run sometimes. That is all. I'm in charge here. Follow me. We will leave the wagon here. Marston, come on. Ignore the stupid ape. Shut your mouth off his boy! Gringo! Take that sniper rifle over there. We have made his work to do.
follow me. The men need help with the blockade. Avancen a las próximas ruinas. Vamos, no podemos fallar. Vamos a matar.
Sorry, partner. Let go of my stone! I don't care how many of you there are! Sea mujer. Amigo, amigo, ¿qué pasa? Uh, 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 Killer like you uh, deserves fine women and wine. The best pleasures earth can give a man. <laughs> I need some information, DeSanta. All in good time. <laughs> uh, my man and I will finish our business here and we can talk back at Escalera. The next time I see you, I need some answers, Captain. Go get drunk, go get a woman! Enjoy life! It's a beautiful struggle! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Andrés lindas, impatrióticas. Dale, que ustedes son putas y lo saben. Por favor, no me hables. Oh, mi amor, nadie te está obligando a hacer nada. Solamente quiero que animes al hombre que va a salvar a tu padre. ¿Tú quieres a tu padre, cierto que sí, linda? What's going on here, Captain DeSena? Just a little recruitment. Nothing for you to be concerned about. You boys using women soldiers now? Our customs are none of your concern. Apparently not. The Santa Mariconcito! Me encontraste algunas chicas. Ay, mamacita. ¿Dónde has estado toda mi vida? Ven, ven, mujeres. Ay, me gusta. It's two patriots were keen to make your acquaintance, ah, the coronel. Fantastic. I love patriots. Ah, hey, Sergeant Marston. You here to fight the war? And we shall make a patriot of you yet. I hope so. <laughs> Any word of those men? Oh, yes. I heard they were riding with Reyes. I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, the Santo, uh, hable con él. Tell him what I wanted. Huh? <laughs> His Excellency, el coronel, would like to employ you in escorting a train down rebel country. The job is dangerous. But you'll have the honor of... Man, <laughs> <laughs> Another patriot? Of knowing that you said Mexico in her fight against forces <laughs> that would destroy our society. How much you offer? 20,000 pesos. And information as to the whereabouts of Javier Escuella. <laughs> okay, then. Mexico loves you, Mr. Martin. She has a funny way of showing it. We must go! Oye, gringo! Are you awake? Does it seem quiet to you? I don't know. You tell me. We have not seen a single rebel yet. I'd say that's a good thing, wouldn't you? Abre fuego! Tiran a matar! doesn't feel right to me. We're on our way to escort a train through rebel-held country. An ambush feels about right to me. Soldado! ¿Quién eres? ¿Cuál escuadrón? Somos nuevos reclutas, Capitán. Put the gun down, gringo. I knew I had not seen these men before. If you were going to shoot me, you would have done it already. La escalera! People have been talking about the rebels planning a large and put the gun down, Gringo. If these supplies are so important, why have we been given so few soldiers? Don't ask me. If you were going You're to the shoot captain. me, you would have I done it already. I thought you were supposed already. to be fearless. I am fearless, but... It's another ambush! Yes, it seems to be on schedule. At least one thing is going right for us. I agree. We ain't off to a good start. You shoot well, gringo. Tell me something. What is your weapon of choice? Put the gun down, gringo. 
We are close to Chuparroso now. I still have a bad feeling about this. Tell me, why are you here? What did they promise you? 20,000 pesos, Javier Escuela. You have done it already. That is a lot of promises. Do you know where Escuela is? You think I am going to tell you that before you have fulfilled your obligations? Do not take me for a fool. I'm giving you no reason not to trust me. You must understand why we are suspicious of you. Most American vigilantes come here to help the rebels. It is strange you have chosen to work for the army. I'm not working for you. How many times do I have to say this? Put the gun down, gringo. Call it what you want, gringo. We are exchanging favors then. Can we at least bear the innocent today? Here we are, at last. Volados! Abordamos el tren! If you were going to shoot me, you would have done it already. Put the gun down, gringo. If you were going to shoot me, you would have done it already. I do not think we have seen the last of the rebels. New recruits can't win a fight like this. I need you to man the Gatling gun. I ain't the soldier here, Captain. Do not question me, gringo. Just do as I say. I am not taking any chances. Now we're talking. I hope you know how to use that gun. Can't be that hard. Just point and pull the trigger. For you, we will all be killed.
clear of the tree! expected us to come back from this. Did you want to kill him, or should I? No. Until I find a squala, he's more used to me a lot. Be alive. Go to the camp. The base commander will want to speak to you. Dios mío! Sobrevive! Señor Marston! Thank you for your efforts. The escort was a success. At least some of your men survived. I didn't think to survive myself. My whole life I have dreamed of a glorious death. <laughs> Vamos! Rapido antes uh, que nos attack an otra vez. These socialist pigs cannot be allowed to win.
cuesta mucho. Está bien, mamá. Está bien. No. no. Ah, señor Marston. Mamá, papá. Este es el gringo que me salvó. Muchas gracias. Uh, my family is indebted to you. Forgive my English. What's happening? Great and terrible things. The revolution is coming. The country will be in turmoil once more. This time, we hope it's the last time. Does that seem likely? With Abraham Reyes, anything is possible. Where's your family going? My parents and my brother are headed to the hills. My sister has to flee. The army have an unfortunate way of treating women. And you? Don't worry about me, Mr. Marston. I'm living in history. I'm not afraid to die. Your nobility is almost as affecting as your naivete. I would rather be dead than a cynic like you, Mr. Marston. I would too. I know you're not really like that. You saved me. Uh, Luisa, ¿quién va a salvar a Miranda? Tenemos que llevar al puerto su barco sale al anochecer. No queda tiempo. Mr. Marston, can I ask one more favor of you? Can you take my sister to the docks? We are sending her to work for a kind man in the Yucatan. She's too young for revolution. Okay. Anything I can do to help out? The boat leaves at sundown. Miranda, vamos. Oh, adiós, Miranda. Ten cuidado. Adiós. Te amo. My brother has given us his stagecoach. They are good horses. I think we should go. Let's go before I change my mind. Paren! Papeles! Este camino está prohibido. What do they want now? Act normal. It's nothing to worry about. Te conozco. Eres un pinche rebelde. Disparen! No la dejen escapar! How did they do this? Show 
hiding!
thank you for everything. Will I see you when I return? Not likely. I ain't planning on staying very long. In some other life, then. Maybe. You should get going. Travel safely. What's wrong, Louisa? I don't weep for myself, but for my country. Abram Reyes has been captured. He has? He was coming to meet me at Roca Madera. It's a very romantic spot. It was a beautiful night, yet he was ambushed by patrol. My heart is breaking, but I cry for Mexico. Uh, where's he being held? El Presidio. You know, in our hearts, we are married already, but his family do not approve. How could they, when I'm little more than a peasant girl? But that's what makes Abram the man he is. He doesn't care for their bourgeois, snobbery, or elitism. He sees the real me, the woman. I'm sure. I'm going to go and rescue him, or die trying. Oh, well, well, I don't think that's such a good idea. Ride with me to near the jail. We'll figure out how to rescue him. Mr. Marston, you are truly a friend of this land. So everyone keeps informing me. Let's go, Mr. Marston.
almost there. He is still alive. I feel it. El Presidio. There it is. You have to find the way in. I'll do my best. There is a partially broken down wall. You should be able to scramble over it. Hurry, but please be careful. There are guards everywhere. If they see you, they will kill you both. Well, if he's alive, I'll try to make sure he stays that way. I have some friends waiting for me near the river. Bring Abraham there. Good luck. Good luck. Que Dios te proteja. Nadie va a 
Luisa sent me. We have to meet her by the river. Okay? Luisa, the girl you're marrying. Oh, yes. Such a devoted thing. El amor de mi vida. Now get us a horse, my friend. I am in no condition to ride myself. Turn any minute. Come 
so long back. I will not forget this, compadre. You will be rewarded. Money, women, Luisa, if you want to. I'm here for two men, and that's it. You have been spending too much time with Captain De Santa. Very funny. Not like that. I'll explain later. I am free again. I will write a poem about this day. This is from a man who was tied to a post with a gun in his face a few minutes ago. I wish I could see Allende's face when he finds out that I defeated a hundred of his men. All you done is get on the back of this horse, my friend. We say it's a pajet. Buena suerte, compadre. Come on. Let's go. 
How do you know my young lover, Laura? It's Luisa. I saved her life not so long back. I will not forget this, compadre. You will be rewarded. Money, women, Luisa, if you want her. I'm here for two men, and that's it. You have been spending too much time with Captain De Santa. Very funny. Not like that. I'll explain later. I am free again. I will write a poem about this day. This is from a man who was tied to a post with a gun in his face a few minutes ago. I wish I could see Allende's face when he finds out that I defeated a hundred of his men. All you've done is get on the back of this horse, my friend, and you barely managed that. Buena suerte, compadre. Arre! There she is. I remember her now, mi amiga. Abraham, Mr. Marston. Oy. The revolution will live on thanks to you. Yes, indeed, John. You are as a brother to me. And my people need a man such as you to help our cause. My ranch is in Agave Viejo, and let me say, my brother, that we await you. Well, best of luck to both of you, but I need to find two men so I can return to America. Mm, no problem. I will help you find those men. And in return, you will win a people her freedom. Viva Mexico! Bye, young. Vente conmigo. Tú sabes que en esta luz puedo ver el fuego en tus ojos. Laura, dame la fuerza para luchar.
Iron Marston. It is not far now. Are you ready? Do my best. There is a partially broken down wall. You should be able to scramble over it. Hurry, but please be careful. There are guards everywhere. If they see you, they will kill you both. Well, if he's alive, I'll try to make sure he stays that way. I have some friends waiting for me near the river. Bring Abraham there. Good luck. You must go now! Go, Mr. Marston! You can do this. You have God on your side.
There will be more in the way. Victoria! Now please come be free, senor. Quick, find us a horse. You will have to ride. I do with you. Let's go! Easy. Let's go, my friend, before the army returns. Let's go. Slow it up now. for Allende. I ain't working for nobody. I'm here because Luisa asked for my help. As I thought you were a friend of Allende's, I was planning on putting a bullet in your back. Well, try to resist the urge. How do you know my young lover, Laura? It's Luisa. I saved her life not so long back. I will not forget this, compadre. You will be rewarded. Money, women, Luisa if you want her. I'm here for two men, and that's it. You've been spending too much time with Captain De Santa. Very funny. Not like that. I'll explain later. I am free again. I will write a poem about this day. This is from a man who was tied to a post with a gun in his face a few minutes ago. I wish I could see Allende's face when he finds out that I defeated a hundred of his men. All you've done is get on the back of this horse, my friend. And you barely managed that. Let's go. Come on. There she is. I remember her now. Mi amiga.
beg your pardon. Your master! Good news, good news. The Coronel himself wants to speak to you. Come. Dámelo, dámelo, besito, besito. Don't be so conventional. Ah, ah, look at that ass, huh? Magnificent. That's save her for later, or I'll kill her and all her family. They're probably rebels anyway, huh? Anyways, it's good to see you, amigo. Good to see you. You know, you are a rare find, a gringo who is also a friend of our country. Bienvenido. We welcome you. Okay. Dad, relax, relax. I have some wonderful news for you. Quite wonderful, in fact. You know the men you hunt? They have been captured in Chupa Rosa. I want you and DeSanta to ride out there, and then you can take possession of them. It is my gift to you. For all your help, senor. Although part of me wishes that you would remain here and enjoy more of our hospitality, huh? <laughs> Thank you. If it's all the same, I'd like to collect the men. I have a wife and son at home whom I miss. Ah, don't we all, amigo? Don't we all? <laughs> the Santa, I want you to take care of Senor Marston. Vámonos, cabrón, go! Adelante! <laughs> Mi amor! Mi amor! <laughs> Come, my friend. It is time to bring these men to justice. This is very good news, my friend. And I say the Colonel will find this man for you. For your sake, you best be telling the truth. You have my word. After that trick you pulled on me with the munitions train, I ain't sure that means very much. You have Espinosa to blame for that. Come now, John. After everything we've been through, I think we can trust each other. Don't you? How did you find him? They were captured just outside to Barossa. Every rat must come out of his hole eventually, and being held in the church. A chance for them to contemplate having. Before you send them to hell, we have the area surrounded. Oh, cheer up, John. This is what you came for. You are so tense all the time. Come, let's have some fun. A little competition with my soldiers to see who's the best shot. What do you say? Anything better than talking to you. Ah, excelente. Okay, each man gets five shots at the local wildlife. Whoever kills the most, I will give twenty-five dollars. Carlitos, tu primero. No tienes ninguna posibilidad. Soy el mejor tirador en todo Nuevo Paraíso. You never did tell me why you're hunting these outlaws. I guess it beats getting a real job. You know, if you were less sick of this, people might be more inclined to trust you. Are you married, or do you rape young girls like your cur? No, I could never touch a woman like that. It's not my way. But for them, it's an honor to please their leader. My wife and child have been taken from me. That's why I have to find these men. I can sympathize with you, Senor Basto. I am married to my country, and these rebel traitors are trying to take it from me. No, I never took a wife. A woman can be a powerful force, like my mother, or a destructive one, like my mother. I find it better to avoid them, for many strong men become weak by giving them to temptations of the flesh. Are you giving up already? Here we are. Go, my friend. They're in the church. Do not worry. Right behind you. Very reassuring. Why are they in the church? Mr. Maston, <laughs> gracias for your service in this land. Levanten esta 
pisa mierda! <risa> ¡Levántalo! <risa> ¡Marston! ¡Ey! ¡Marston! You have betrayed this land enough. I hope you have a clear conscience. Because you're about to meet God. <laughs> My brother, they will kill you if we don't give your ropes up. Over here, I will free you.
Tracer! Por aquí! Hijo de puta! that the days of this evil regime are numbered. Soon, we shall be free, living together in a noble republic, justly ruled by fine men. But, 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 el trabajo, the job is not done. Our struggle is not over. We will fight on day and night. Until local tyrants like Allende are no more. And him and all his dogs are brought to the sword. We shall be free. This time things shall be different for every man and woman in this land. And, and one day, and one day soon, Allende will know justice! Yeah. My brothers, fight on! In our hearts, we are all free! Let us make it so! Viva la revolución! Viva Mexico! 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 That's the flower. Hey, señor. You want trouble, friend? Manos arriba. Antilas. Tranquilo. Tranquilo, amigo. Tranquilo. Ya lo tengo. Mueve ese cabrón. Mercy! El mundo es muy difícil. Hmm. Tenemos que jugarlo bien. Ah, uh -huh. oh, Mr. Marston, I knew you would come. Thanks for the welcoming committee. I'm sorry, we cannot be too careful. The world is very dangerous. Especially when you greet it with a gun. Please. Mr. Marston. My father was killed yesterday. The army found him and accused him of treason. They cut out his heart and fed it to their dogs. Allende did this. Then he took the honor of two young girls. I'm sorry to hear that, Luisa. My father must not die in vain. His death must mean something. It'll mean that war is brutal and unnecessary and good people die. And that's all it will mean. That is not enough. Well, you know I'll do whatever I can, but I have problems of my own. We all have problems. This is about the people. My father died for his people, for these men and for millions like them, that they may be free. While there are guns and money, there won't be any freedom, Louisa. Mr. Marston, 
the movement is on the brink of great victory. Allende knows this and has sent for reinforcements. Abraham Reyes asked personally that you stop them reaching Escalera. They are coming by the old trail. You must ambush them. I have my own family to worry about. Mr. Marson, I have lost my father. My mother is in the United States. My sister has fled. I have no family, just because. Please, good actions make you a good man. Then I'm doomed. But I will help you, out of respect for your loss. Thank you, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Come on, the army convoy is already on its way. Sorry about your father. His death must not be in pain. Now we shall fight even harder to win power for Abraham. I admire your devotion. He is a true revolutionary. A man who puts the needs of others before his own. A man who fights out of love rather than hate. But you know this already. I heard about the battle at Chuparrosa. How he killed nearly a hundred soldiers to save your life. It'll go down in legend. I'm sure of that. Can I trust you, Mr. Marston? In what way? You have done so much for me and my family, but I still can't forgive you for helping Allende, for what you did to the rebels. I'm here for two men, that's it. Not to take sides. And certainly not to fight a war that isn't mine. It makes no sense. You make a choice by not making a choice, you know. Allende betrayed me. I saw him do bad things. Things that disgust even me. Allende is pura maldad. One day I will cut his heart out. But me? You? Him? We're all shooting people. It don't really seem like we're so very different. The difference is why, Mr. Marston? The ideals we hold, there can never be revolution without blood. Until people forget what they're shooting for, and just enjoy killing for its own sake. You Americans forget too quickly. That is the problem. If it wasn't for your revolution, you would still be making tea for the English. At least we knew where we stood. It's more difficult to understand why your own people treat you like shit. It is the same here. We fought off the Spanish. We fought off the French. We even fought off the Americans. Finally, Mexico won its independence. And all we've done since then is fight each other. It is not far now. The army convoy will be coming from the east. We're going to steal their supplies? No, destroy them and kill everyone. Abraham wants to send a message. Do you have experience with explosives? A little. It's been a long time. Good, because we do not. You will man the detonator. My men are waiting there for us. They will also need your help setting up the dynamite. I'll do my best. We will do this for my father, John. There they are. These men will help you rig dynamite on the road. Please tell them where to place it. I'll be waiting up above, watching for the wagons. Okay, follow me, gentlemen. You are the expert gringo. Show us where. right here.
Hurry! We don't have much time. This is good. Another one here. And the last one here. Don't believe we said the detonator, we will handle the rest. Get ready, John. These are supplies to be used against my people. They must be destroyed. There it is. Get ready. Thank you, Mr. Marston. We are a step closer to power. My father would be very proud. I hope it was worth it. I must return to Campo Mirada. Meet me there when you can. I will do my best to return the favor. have come. That wretched animal de Santa has been sent to oversee a massacre in El Sepulco. Come, we must stop him and finally kill that vermin and all of Allende's other followers. Go now. My men will show you the way. I will stay with the camp. It's good that you are helping Luisa. It ain't right what happened to her father. 
She's a brave girl. She can fight as well as any man. She ain't the only woman I've seen fighting for Reyes. Yes, women, even children. Everybody must become a soldier if we are to win this war. That's a lot to sacrifice. I just hope it's worth it. It is better to die free than live as slaves. Some banks ain't easy to get into on weekend. It was impressive what you did at the bridge, destroying the convoy. The army is getting weaker by the day. I'm sure there's more supplies where those came from. We will destroy those too? I get they scare and making mistakes. We are close to victory than you think. Yeah! Let's go! not to open fire until I make a move. We don't want to give him a chance to escape. And leave DeSanta to me. I need him alive. We will wait for your lead, senor. En el nombre del gobierno provincial del coronel Allende y del estado de este país, te condeno a muerte por traición. ¿Tienes algunas últimas palabras? No. Come on, quick! Mexican army after you. What have you got for me? You're angry. I can understand that. Please, we can come to an agreement. My men will kill you. 
What you are doing? Let me go. I am begging you. Kill this piece of shit now, senor? Or would you like to pleasure yourself? You are the better man. Slow it down, will you? Go on, finish him. He's all yours, fellas. I got what I need. Esto es para Mexico! It is done. Come on, now we find your friend. Sorry, partner. Even if he does deserve it. That man, he's responsible for hundreds of innocent dead. Maybe thousands. He will burn in hell. We all will, my friend. If we don't die dead, then that guy is dead. The army is without leaving. Give my room when I get there now before it's dead. First, you need to help me find Javier Escuela. Come on. Time ago, but not anymore. Hey, you, lady. Hmm. Where's Javier Escuela? <laughs> Javier Escuela? He hasn't been seen around here in months. You shot up this place for him, huh? I wouldn't spit on him if he was on fire. I don't blame you. But Captain DeSanta said he was here. <laughs> and you believe him? You must be more stupid than you look. <laughs> Go shoot up some place else. <coughs> <laughs>
Sorry about this, partner. This damn weather.
be taught a lesson. Tenemos que movilizar fuerzas en el extremo sur de la llanura para que los flancos del este y el oeste. Where sean... is Abraham Reyes? Here, amigo. Here. Well, well, well. Look who it is. The American bandit turned bounty hunter who is about to win the Mexico Revolution. I don't know about that, Mister. No, but I do, Mister John Marston. I do. A man like you or me with. With just a few such men, I tell you, I could rule the entire country. Hey, hermanos unidos, set my people free! Libre Mexico! Mexico! Libre Mexico! Mexico! Viva la revolución! Their energy is, 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 uh, is like food to me. I feel I was sent for them and they were sent to me. Good for you. Uh, when I rule these people, I shall be fair and judicious and wise. How so, you ask? Very simple. I know these people. I know this land. In, in short, I can make them better. It must be pleasant to be a man so at one with his destiny. I, mio, I don't do it for myself, John Marston. I do it for my people. Well, exactly. <laughs> Sarcasm, my friend, should be beneath a man such as you, don't you think? Very little is beneath a man such as me. Ha! <laughs> okay, well, well, in that case, I assume a little robbery will be a pleasant day's work. All in a good cause, of course. Come, my brother. Let us strike while the iron is hot. Follow me. We must hurry. Tell me more, John. Are my sources correct? Have you come to Mexico to murder your two best friends? Not exactly. We were friends once. A lot's changed since then. Now that we are friends, I hope you will give me some warning if you get a sudden urge to kill me. You'll be the first to know when I kill you, I promise. So where are they? Who? Williamson oh, and Escuela. Watch where you're writing. 
I'm not sure exactly where. They are definitely in Mexico. That much I know already. You told me you found them. And I will. I have my very carajo. Cuidado, John. If I find out you're lying to me, Reyes, you'll really see the man I used to be. I will give you your friends, I promise. Just give me time. So how did you meet these William Song and Escuella? We ran in the same gang together, under a fella called Dutch. We were all bad kids, lost, angry, and forgotten. He kind of saved us. Come on, John, we have to get to Chupalosa. I saw enough to know he ain't a good man. It is bad enough he beats the people he swore to protect, but it is worse that he has done Something must have made him that way. Not that piece that you cannot miss that train. Stop riding off, John. You're supposed to be protecting me. Allende is nothing more than a perrito for General Sanchi. A what? A little puppy dog that licks his feet and makes him feel low. Ayena will do it. That's a loyal dog. Sanchez isn't stupid. He knows the only way to keep power is to control the countryside. And for that, he needs vicious idiots like Allende. He's certainly vicious. Allende came from poverty, and look now at how he treats the poor. It's strange, all right. Allende is a peasant who wants to be a nobleman, and... You're a nobleman who wants to be a peasant. Have you ever had the feeling that you are living history, John? Ain't we all living history? From a little boy, I always knew I was destined for greatness. My nursemen used to tell me, Abraham, mierda, you're slowing us down, Marston. Good for you. First, Allende will fall. Then I will march on the capital for Sanchez. Where do you live in America, John? I have a small place up in West Elizabeth. You been? No, but I have heard of it. That is where Blackwater is. The town with motor cars and moving pictures. A different world. It is that. But we ain't too near there. Most people here have never even seen electricity. Many, many of my brothers have crossed that border in search of a better life. I ain't sure they're gonna find one. Me, I could never live in America. The Mexicans and the Americans. They are like an egg and a chestnut. I have no idea what you're talking Whoa, about. Watch what you're writing. Maybe you should learn Spanish then. What I mean is, we are too different. We ain't so different. Just because somebody draws a line in the ground doesn't mean people on either side of it ain't the same. You Americans lack fashion, John. You barely see and hear things. Not far now. Chuparosa is just up ahead. We must hurry. The train will be leaving soon. What's on that train that's so important? I received information that the army is transporting a vast quantity of supplies to distribute to their forces. Do we have a plan? I will explain when we get there, but those supplies won't be arriving. I figured as much. Today, Allende will pay a high price for his treason. So listen, this train is filled with valuable supplies we need, but it's also filled with government troops. We'll set off a very loud distraction. You can board the train, and then you can disconnect the army cars, huh? OK. OK. But listen, we've got to get this done before the train rolls out of the station. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> well, did I not promise you fun times, amigo? Eh? There are too many soldiers. We must surprise them. Here, take this knife. You can use it to kill the guards quietly. Wait until I distract them. Then get on that train as fast as you can, John. 
Wait until I distract them. Then get on that train as fast as you can, John. Bye. Todos van a morir hoy. Andale.
move like a cat onto that train. Magnificent. Go ahead and blow the armored car and take whatever you need, my brother. Vámonos. What are you waiting for? We need to get into that armored car. <laughs> Not a bad day of robbing the establishment to give to the poor, eh, Mr. Marston? Very noble, I'm sure, but I need to know where Williamson and Escuela are holed up. All in good time, amigo. I'm off to deliver these goods. I'll see you back at the ranch. Oh, my spies tell me they soon will have the information you need.
Let's go, John. Today we will both have victory. Let's ride, my brothers. Just received word of your fight with Allende's men at El Sepulcro. Finally, the Santa is dead. But why did you not kill him yourself when my men gave you the chance? I could see they wanted it more than I did. The Santa had given me what I needed, or I thought he had. A lot of young boys will sleep safer in their beds now. The Santa was only following orders. He was dumb and loyal to his awful master, but that's all he was. Where are they, Abraham? They are at El Presidio, John. Can you believe it? The place we first met. The scene of one of my greatest victories over Allende's traitors. You could not write a better story. It's a story I want to finish. It is a story we both want to finish, my brother. If my rebels can take El Presidio, then we can move on Escalera. The revolution is happening, John. Are you sure they're there? Escuela and Williamson? Javier Escuela is there. That much I am sure of. I don't know about Williamson. The squirrel will do for now. I am told they paid Allende to hide them. They have been in his protection since you arrived in Mexico. You see, you should have trusted your brother, Abraham, all along. When we have him, then you can start making me feel bad. Immediately after you thank me for everything I've done for you, amigo. I knew I had heard the name Javier Escuella before. He is from this province. They tell me he was once a notorious bounty hunter and also one of the early revolutionaries. My men will launch a ruse attack on the side entrance to the fort. Meanwhile, you, my American friend, will drive this wagon at the front gate and jump off when you're close. It's been packed with five crates of TNT. That sounds crazy. How long's the fuse? <laughs> yes, like I say, fun times. It's plenty long enough, I think. I see you in there, amigo. Go on, John. You can do this.
Remember to jump, my friend!
Who's come from? Friend, it's been a long time. <laughs> Hello, brother. It's uh, good to see you. I heard you was coming. You took your time, no? Come on, you're not gonna shoot your own brother, are you? We was family. Yeah, we were. Then you and Dutch went crazy, and family didn't mean so much. <laughs> so now you do the government's work. And what do you do? You just work for a different government. <laughs> Come on, brother. I think we should go our separate ways, huh? What you and Dutch did was wrong. And the way you left me was wrong. Now, I hate to judge, but as it turns out, it's you or me. The way I see it, might as well be you. We thought you was dead, brother. I promise. I'm telling the truth. Besides, I can give you a bill. In Dutch, Dutch is in Colombia. I can take you straight to him. Hmm? If you left me to die, Whoa. to save your own skin, and now <laughs> you expect me to care Whoa, about you? You got it all wrong, brother. I've always loved you. Even now. Who's I been go fishing with now, huh? <laughs> my brother. I'll let the others judge it. Where's Bill? I don't Where's know. Where's Bill, you son of a bitch? Do you think I won't kill you, brother? He ain't here, brother. He's with agenda. <laughs> it's a little late for revenge, John. I ain't here to kill you, Javier. This is just business. Let's go, shall we? Come on, amigo. Abigail wouldn't want this. Abigail would have killed you already. She always thought you was a creep. We was family, brother. You and me. Like Cain and Abel, I guess. Leaving each other for dead. I understand what happened. It wasn't like you thought it was. Whatever you say, old friend. It was Beal, not me. Yeah, and he's next. 
go. Yeah. So you and Bill are back together. Two crazy men sharing a bed. Go to hell, you pathetic fool. You're gonna be locked up for a hell of a long time. Unless they choose to hang you. about him or you a long time ago, friend. As I say, this ain't been a social call. It's just business. Just let me go, John. It's me all you want. You're wasting what's left of your breath. Enjoy the view. Breathe the air. Last of either, you're gonna be getting, brother. Ah, oh, you piece of shit. Don't be sure about what you're doing, brother. You saw me out. Didn't that life we had mean nothing to you? Ah, oh, ah, oh, you puto. Ah, oh, one day, one day I promise you, you're gonna regret this. One day's about all you got left. Uh, I hope you and your wife and children rot in hell. You know that life we lived is over. And when we was living it, it didn't mean nothing anyway. It was just an excuse, and we all knew. What I knew is that you was always a puto. And you're still a puto. Marston, come with me. The army sent reinforcements. Come. Yeah, go with your puto. <laughs> the army Por is aquí. coming. Get up there and man that cannon. Two old friends reunited. It is a beautiful thing.
Mr. Marston, fancy seeing you down here. I must say it's a pleasant surprise to see you. You've done well, Mr. Marston. Now, Javier here gets to see how far the hand of justice can reach. Come on, you. Get in the damn automobile. Can we assume one of my commitments is cleared? Unfortunately, nothing is cleared, John, until your obligations are met. We need you to find Williamson, then head to Blackwater as quick as you can. We have reason to believe that Dutch Vanderland is in the area. Oh, your wife sends her regards. <laughs> Careful, partner. Cuidado! Coronel Allende me visita. Vamos, no
¡Escuchen, rebeldes! ¡Te voy a Escuchen hacer como ¡No aguantamos a ¡Otra vez! <risa> 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 ¡Welcome to Mexico! 